So, ayun. Hello, YouTube. Hello, Amisai. Kamusta kayo? Hopefully, safe kayo dyan sa inyong mga bahay-bahay, ano? Ngayong lockdown. Sana masaya kayo kasama ang inyong family. Yan. Gawin natin makabuluhan ng ating uh, lockdown. Kahit na hindi tayo nasa normal na sitwasyon, uh, magbasa tayo, makapag-review tayo. Uh, para hindi sayang yung oras, no? Gawin nating opportunity to, gawin nating makabuluhan yung lockdown para mas ma-master pa natin yung ating ano, mga areas and subjects sa criminology. So pagdating ng board exam, mani-mani na lang sa inyo. So ayan. Mahirap yung aking pwesto. By the way, sa hindi pa nga pala nakakakilala sa akin, ako si John Patrick Privado. Ah, isang registered criminologist. Gumaduit ako noong 2019 sa IRIST or sa Iloilo Amang Rodriguez Institute of Science and Technology sa Manila. No? As cum laude. And uh, I passed the licensure exam the same year. A second place naman sa ating board exam. And, hindi ako matalino. Uh, masipag lang magbasa. Siguro, I spend 8 to 12 hours a day ng pagbabasa kasi medyo malilimutin tayo. Kailangan natin ng refresh. Mag-refresh na mag-refresh. So, ayun. Yun lang yung tip ko sa inyo. Kung, kung gusto nyo mag-tap sa board exam, kung gusto nyo uh, itap or ipasa ng may mataas na rate ang ating board exam, magbasa kayo na magbasa. Hindi importante kung hindi ka masyadong matalino. So, kailangan lang basa ka ng basa. Kasi yung mga binasa mo nung mga nakarang buwan or linggo, mawawala yun. Kailangan mong i-refresh yun. Kasi yun lang. <clears throat> Bago tayo magsimula, intay lang tayo ng mga 50 viewers. Ano? Sabi kasi 50 viewers daw. Hello, Amisai. <laughs> Mahirapan ako kasi naka-landscape pala. By the way, um, nung nag-aaral ako, working student din ako nun. Um, first year hanggang ano, siguro third year. Kalahati ng third year yan. Nag-working student din ako noon as production staff. Pero nung nag-third year na ako, tapos nag-fourth year, hindi na ako nagtrabaho noon kasi mas inuna ko na yung pag-aaral natin. So yan, 16 viewers na.
Okay, okay. Ayun. Advice ko sa inyo sa pagre-review. Ako kasi, ano eh, sa umaga, apat na oras, no? Nagbabasa ako ng apat na oras sa umaga. Apat na oras sa tanghali, apat na oras sa gabi. So, nagsisimula ako noon ng alas 6 ng umaga. Hanggang alas 10 ng, ano, ng umaga. Tapos, pahinga. And then, start ng 12 hanggang 4. And then, pahinga ulit. And then, 6, 6 p.m. hanggang 10 p.m. Yun, nagbabasa ako noon. Pero hindi ko naman yung lagi nasusunod. Minsan, uh, pag tinatamad ako, hindi ko sinusunod yun. And also, di ba, may, may lang ngayon, di ba? Tapos, November pa yung exam ninyo. So, gawin yung opportunity yun. Magbasa kayo na magbasa kasi ako noon. Uh, sabi natin, 8 months ako nagbasa noon. 8 months ako nag- uh, nag ano, nag-prepare. So sabi nga nila, preparation is the key. So, hindi mo makukuha yung isang bagay kapag uh, hindi ka nag-prepare. No? Kailangan mo mag-prepare ng mabuti. Kasi worth it naman. Kasi isang basis lang yan. Isang basis lang na mag-take ka ng board exam. So, kung gusto mo na rin pumasa, eh di bakit di mo pa galingan? Ano, di mo pa tuduhin? Eh ganun din naman yun. Mapapagod ka na rin lang. Gawin mo na yung best mo. Ayun lang advice ko sa inyo. Ano po ba? Ayun. Isa pa nga palang advice. Ano? Uh, sumali kayo sa mga group chat. Tsaka sa mga ganito. Sa mga review online. Kasi napakalaking tulong yan. Uh, marirefresh ng marirefresh yung mga mga ano yung mga questions and uh, facts na kailangan yung malaman. Tsaka ano pa? Ayun, napakalaking uh, bagay nitong ano, review online kasi kahit hindi tayo magkakasama, ano, nakukuha nating makapagbasa, nakukuha nating makapagsagot. Mas na eager tayong mag ano, mag-review kasi madami tayong uh, nakakakompetensya. Ayun pala, rival. Kailangan mo ng rival. So kung may kaibigan ka, may kaibigan ka na ano din, disidido din na makapasa sa ano, sa board exam. Gawin mo siyang rival. Gusto mo, sabihin mo sa kanya na rival tayo kung gusto mo naman, ah, sarili mo lang. Kasi ako nun, hindi ko sinabi na gusto ko siyang maging rival. Hindi ko din sasabihin kung sino. And <laughs> parang ano nga, one-sided. Pero yun, ginalingan ko para mas malampasan ko siya. And, ayun, kahit pa paano naman, mas nakatulong sa akin. Bain lang natin, ano? 25 more person. Bakit nakakantok mag-aaral? <laughs> nakakantok talaga mag-aaral, lalo na pag, ano, pag hindi mo mag-gets yung mga, ano, yung mga words, yung questions. So, ang gawin mo, kapag ka, Inaanto ka, matulog ka. Matulog ka, mga 15 minutes. Kasi ako nag, uh, yun, yun, yun tinatawag natin na power nap. No? 15 minutes yun, mag ka. Kasi kapag sumubra ka sa 15 minutes, 20 minutes to 30 minutes na tulog mo, uh, aantokin ka na nun, tatama din ka na lalo. So, 15 minutes yung maximum na, ano, na tagal ng pagtulog. Power nap. Pagka, pagka tulog mo na ganun, pag inanto ka, pag natulog ka, pagkagising mo nun, uh, masigla ka na ulit. Review na ulit. Ayan. Isa pa pala kung mayroon kayong mga libro, ano? may mga natatago kayong libro galing sa mga school nyo kasi kami mayroon kami mga libro dun sa school namin, binibili namin. Uh, basahin yun. Kasi yun yung basic. Doon natin, yun kailangan natin mamaster yun. Doon na halos kinukuha yung mga tanong sa, ano, sa board exam. 32. Ang ating ano, ang ating questions ay 250 questions. Sama-sama na 'yon. Inexam do inexam niyo daw to sa group sa Facebook ano. Five areas simula sa Leia hanggang CA, matagal-tagal na labanan 'to. So hopefully samahan niyo ako, hopefully may matutunan kay sa akin. No? Yung mga hindi niyo nasagot ng maayos or hindi niyo alam yung sagot sana, ma-deliver ko na maayos ano. 
Ano ibigay ko yung uh, dapat kong sabihin. And of course, thank you kay Attorney J. Maso Ferraro. Kilala natin sa pangalang Attorney JMF. Ano? Thank you very much, sir, sa opportunity na binigay mo sa akin dito na ako mag-ration itong 250 question na ito. Uh, refresh, refresh na rin sa akin to and then makatulong na din ako sa kanila. No? Ayan. Correction. Hmm. Kasi nun sa amin, pag-aralan nyo mabuti yung ano, probation at saka ano, difference ng probation and parole. Ano ka ba? Yung mga tao, daanan nyo din. Mga personalities. Of course, yung mga ano, yung ating mga penal institution. Analysis ng mga questions sa board exam. Isa-isain mo, word by word. Tagalogin mo. So kung hindi mo alam yung uh, kung hindi mo alam ano isa isa mo yung yung question isa isa mo yung word Kapag hindi mo pa rin nalaman tingnan mo sa ano sa multiple choice Sa multiple choice kasi minsan yung iba pampagulo lamang So alisin mo na yun halimbawa Ang tanong ay about sa uh, non institutional correction tapos may nakita kang mga institutional correction na ano doon na pamilyan Eliminate mo na yun. Mamili ka na lang dun sa non-institutional correction na, ano, na answer. Ano? Tsaka ano, tip pala sa board exam. Ano? Kapag ka nag-exam na kayo, basahin nyo yung question, uh, questionnaire. Basahin nyo ng isang beses. Tapos tandaan nyo yung mga pos possible na answer. Uh, ano halin nyo lang? Duhitan nyo lang yung letters na gusto nyo ano. Kung yung, yun yung akala nyo na sagot. And then, pagkatapos nyo ano, pagkatapos nyo basahin ng isang pas, pasada, basahin nyo ulit. Pagkabasa, pagkabasa nyo naman nun, uh, bilugan nyo naman yung mga sagot na sa tingin nyo tama talaga. And kung mayroon kayong mga hindi alam na sagot, iwan nyo lang. Kasi pangatlong basa, doon nyo yun, ano, doon nyo yun sasagutan. And kapag hindi nyo talaga alam ang sagot, eh di, hindi natin, mag, wala tayong magagawa doon. Hindi, mamili ka na lang kung ano yung napupusuan mo. Basta tatlong beses sa isang, ano, sa isang area ka magbasa. Kasi mahaba naman yung oras, eh. Untayin lang natin sila, 35. Okay, sabi nag-text na si attorney. Simulan na natin. Okay, without further ado, let's do this. Simulan natin sa Leia, Law Enforcement and Administration. So, ayan. Okay, patong ko lang dito. Ano? Uh, Ito lang guys ha. Mali yung setup ko Good morning sa inyo. Magandang umaga mga amisay. Mga amikus. Amikus. Okay. 
Number one question. Check po natin para hindi tayo malubat sa biyahe. Hopefully makahabol yung iba, no? Okay. Let's start. Number one question. An information that is completely reliable and confirmed by other sources is evaluated as A1, B1, A2, or B2. So this question is, ano, tungkol ito sa evaluate. Yun yung confirmed by other sources, ano. And reliability naman. So kapag ka sinabi natin accuracy, confirmed by other, kayo. Sorry guys, nawawala yung uh, internet na. Okay, ulit ulit. So yun. So sa, sa accuracy, ang tayong uh, mnemonics na CPP DIT. And sa reliability naman, meron tayong mnemonics na CUFNUR or CUP, CUF, NUR. So the answer in this question is letter A, A1. Kasi sa reliability niya is yung confirmed by other sources or sa accuracy pala yun, sorry, and sa reliability ay yung completely reliable. Okay? Sorry sa internet natin. Ano? So, ang sabi is A1. So, by the way, tandaan nyo din yung uh, sources of information sa ano din yun, sa evaluation din yun, yung X, yung ano, yung simula sa T, T, uh, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. At uh, commander or chief, yung U, sa report by the resident agent, V, uh, report of PNP and uh, AFP personnel, W, information uh, galing sa captured enemy, X, galing sa public employees ano, and civilian, and yung Z, uh, Y and Z ay documentary. So, yun yung sources of uh, information. <clears throat> okay, next na natin. Number two question. This corporal, corporal atrasado was dismissed from the PNP due to a wall absence without leave. So, is he qualified to be security guard? That's the question. Letter A, no, because he was discharged from the PNP. B, yes, AWOL is not criminal offense. C, he was dishonorably discharged. And D, no, he was convicted of crime involving moral torpitude. So what is the answer in this question? Letter C, no, he was dishonorably discharged. Uh, kung babalikan nyo yung mga qualification, no, and disqualification ng ating security guard, yung nag-apply as security guard, Makikita nyo itong uh, uh, letter C as one of the disqualification. Kailangan hindi dishonorably discharged ang isang uh, PNP personnel or uh, so sabi nating army or mga government uh, government employee. Ano, kailangan hindi sila dishonorably discharged para makapag-apply sila as security guard. So yung letter A, pwede makapag-apply yun kasi discharge siya from PNP honorable, honorably. Ano? So, sagot dito is letter C. Next question. The one who introduced the tremendous breakthrough in military intelligence by utilizing espionage and dividing his spies into four classes, namely common spies, double spies, spies of consequence, and forced spies, earning his title father of organized espionage, was Frederick Taylor, Alexander the Great, Frederick the Great or Julius Caesar. So alamin muna natin yung, yung mismong answer niya bago natin pakilala yung iba. So ang answer dito ay si Frederick the Great. Siya yung at tinat tinatawag nating father of organized military espionage uh, because of his four types of spies. Yung common spies, double spies, spies of consequence, and forced spies. Common spies yan yung mga spy o espia na mahihirap ano mga Poor folk, yung tawagin. 
kung saan gusto nilang magkaroon ng pera, konting kita. So, nag apply sila as spy. Double spy, yan naman yung mga spies na nag- uh, nagkakakalat ng mga false information sa kalaban natin. Spies of consequence, yun yung mga malaking tao na kailangan mo ng uh, bait o kailangan mo ng sabi natin na malaking halaga para ma maging spia mo sila. And yung first spies naman, yung mga ayaw mag spies pero napilitan dahil uh, pwener sa sila. Ano? So yun ay uh, kay Frederick the Great. Father of Organized Military Spionage. How about Frederick Taylor? So, si Frederick Taylor, siya yung nag-introduce ng scientific management, ano? scientific management theory. So, sabi doon, kailangan daw i-analyze natin and i-synthesize or i-blend ang workflow to improve economic efficiency and labor productivity. Yan. How about Alexander the Great? Sino naman si Alexander the Great? Siya yung nag-introduce ng first letter sorting. So, anong nangyari dyan? Ah, nagkaroon siya ng doubt sa kanyang mga troops, ano, sa kanyang mga army ng panahon niya. So, para malaman niya kung sino yung taksil, para malaman niya kung sino yung ah, hindi tapat sa kanya. Ang ginawa niya, yung mga letter ano, na lumalabas at pumapasok sa camp nila, ah, binabasa niya. Doon malalaman niya kung sino yung ah, may taksil. So, tinitingnan niya muna bago niya ibigay sa sa sundalo niya or bago niya isend sa papadala ng sundalo niya yung kanyang mga letters ayun yun so first letter sorting Alexander the Great how about Julius Caesar Julius, Julius Caesar nag uh, nung panahon niya nag place siya ng speculators mga speculators in his legions or troops ano ba yung mga speculators yung mga speculators yan yung mga information collecting agency yung baga parang mga intel yan kung saan sila yung kumukuha ng mga information about their enemy. So, first in military organization yung nilagay ni Julius Caesar na yun. So, kaya napaka-importante yung tao din ni Julius Caesar sa uh, military organization. Number four. Okay. What is the rank of PNPA cadet? So, PNPA cadet ang tinatanong. A. Inspector B. Senior Inspector C. Higher than Inspector o as higher than senior senior police officer but lower than inspector or D, both B and C so ang question ay ano daw ang ranggo ng PNPA cadet, kadete so ang sagot dito ay letter C, higher than is PO4 but lower than inspector, kapag ka nakagraduate sila ng uh, academy at nag apply sila sa mga bureau, no? Doon pa lang sila magkakaroon ng ranggo na inspector. So, ayun. Number five. Following the requirements of an operator or manager of security agency. So, the following are requirements of an operator or manager of security agency. Except, Filipino citizen. Kasama yan. College graduate and or a commissioned officer in the inactive service or retired from the AFP and PNP. Asama yan? D. Has taken a course of seminar uh, has taken a course seminar on this industrial security management and or must have adequate training and experience in security business. So, kasama yan. So, the answer in this question is letter B. Kasi ang sabi dyan, at least 25 years old. So, pagka 25 years old ka na, pwede ka na maging security operator or security manager ng isang agency. Okay? Next question. Number six. An undercover assignment in which the agent established residence in or near the dwelling which houses the subject. So, isa, isa daw itong uri ng undercover assignment. So, letter A, work assignment, B, social assignment, C, dwelling, and D, rope job. So, alamin muna natin yung sagot. Ano? So, sagot dito sa question na ito ay letter C, dwelling. Ang mangyayari, yung ating undercover agent, uh, pupunta siya halimbawa sa isang subdivision kung saan nandun ang kanyang subject. Doon siya maninirahan as resident ng isang subdivision na yun, malapit sa ating subject ano? para malaman niya yung galaw-galaw ng ating subject. So, dwelling. 
naninirahan siya sa malapit sa kanyang uh, subject like side division or condo okay letter A work assignment ito naman yung ating undercover agent nagtatrabaho siya kung saan nagtatrabaho si ating subject so kung halimbawa nagtatrabaho si subject sa isang bar ano or sa isang office so ang gagawin itong si undercover agent uh, magtatrabaho din doon mag-apply din doon as uh, worker as employee so para malaman niya ang galaw ni ating uh, subject how about social social yung mga halimbawa sa bar sa casinos no pumupunta yung ating uh, undercover agent doon para makiparty kung saan yung ating subject ay palagi din andun sa bahay na yun or sa bar na yun or sa social ano yun establishment na yun so yun letter D rope job uh, another term yun ng undercover uh, operation rope job so next 7 it is the identification of strength command structure and disposition of the personnel Units and equipment of any threat force. So, ito daw identification of, of strength, command structure, and disposition of personnel. Units and equipment of any threat force. So, ang hinahanap natin dyan ay letter B. Order of battle intelligence. Yan. Ina-identify natin yung lakas, kung paano ba sila mamuno, yung commander nila, ano bang disposition ng personnel, mga equipments, ano, mga advancement ng kanilang Military. So, order battle of intelligence. How about line intelligence, tactical intelligence, and geographical intelligence? Simulan natin sa line intelligence. So, itong line intelligence, uh, it pertains, ito, ay, it pertains to intelligence or information required by the commander for conducting planning and tactical operation. So, lagi natin tatandaan kapag line intelligence uh, related ito sa ating operation sa so planning and tactical operation no so ginagamit ito sa operasyon yung ating uh, tactical and planning operation so nag it, it pertains to knowledge about puwet ano ba yung puwet people weather enemy and terrain so sino ba yung kalaban mo ilan ba yung kalaban mo ano ba yung klima doon malamig ba doon mainit ba doon no terrain ano bang ano ba mabundok ba doon o patag ba doon so yun yung inaalam natin dito sa line intelligence para sa operation so about tactical intelligence medyo related dito sa ating uh, line intelligence but in tactical intelligence lagi natin tatandaan ito ay uh, it information contribute to special objectives or specific specific objectives rather so information that uh, contribute to specific objectives and immediate in nature and necessary for effective police planning and operation so na example nyan so immediate daw in nature yan and uh, mayroon daw specific na objectives ang line intelligence so halimbawa sa isang lugar mayroong ilog so ang line intelligence ang tactical intelligence intelligence dun kung paano ka makaka tawid dun sa ilog, sa ilog na yun ano bang kailangan mong gawin magbabang ka ba magbabalsa ka ba o sisisidin nyo ba yun lalangoy nyo ba yun? So, yun yung information na kailangan natin makuha. Which is immediate in nature. How about geographical intelligence? So, geographical intelligence, uh, it, it deals with the progress of research ano, and development as effective or as effect the economy and military potential of nation. So, ito palang geographical intelligence. Um, ito yung mga information about sa technological advancement ng isang bansa or uh, military advancement ng isang bansa technological advancement of uh, nation so yun so yun yung uh, inaalam natin sa geographical intelligence okay number eight. in biblical beginnings who was the great leader of the Israelites who utilized intelligence by sending spies to the land of Canaan so, sino daw yan? Si Biblical character yan. Kung saan nag, nag-send siya ng 12 spies. No? 12 scout. Para malaman ang structure ng land of Canaan. So, answer dyan is si Moses. 
Si Delilah and the video, uh, character, uh, biblical character din siya. Si Delilah, uh, ginagamit niya yung information niya and charm to gather information. Gather. Ginagamit niya yung kanyang beauty and charm to gather information. Yun. Siya yung responsible sa pagbagsak ni Samson. No? Nalaman niya na ang kahinaan pala ni Samson na yung kanyang buhok. So, yun. Next. A system of controlling an agent by putting his salary in a bank to be withdrawn only after fulfillment of a condition. So, uri daw ito ng controlling. So, may dalawang uri ng control. Positive and negative control. So, yung control, yun yung kung paano natin mapapasunod yung ating mga agent. So, may dalawang uri. Positive, ibig sabihin, uh, magandang uh, uh, approach ano for example ng ano ng positive approach o positive control uh, professionalism tsaka rapport ano mino motivate mo yung iyong agent pag nakaka nakagawa siya ng mission so pinupuri mo siya pinaparangalan and psychological control of course uh, pagka pinupuri mo kapag ka, uh, lagi mo siyang ginagabayan makokontrol mo yung ating Uh, agent. So, yun yung positive control. Yung negative control naman, ang example niyan is reprimand. Pinapagalitan mo, kanting mali lang, papagalitan mo na siya. Or yung tinatawag nga nating escrow account. Na tsaka mo lamang ibibigay yung salary ng isang agent kapag ka nagawa na niya yung kanyang mission. So, the answer in this question is uh, escrow account. Next. Then, This principle refers to the ability of one man to direct and supervise his subordinates. Ayun daw. It states that there is a limit with regards to the number of subordinates that a superior can effectively supervise. Thus, the rest of the supervisory power is delegated to his immediate subordinates for them to conduct the supervision of organizational members at the lower level. So ang tinatanong dito sa question ito ay yung ability ng ating supervisor ano na mag-supervise mag-supervise ng kanyang subordinates yung ability niya o yung kanyang limit ano with regard to the numbers of subordinates so halimbawa isang professor ang kaya lang niyang turuan ay 20 person o 20 student so more than that hindi na niya hindi na siya effective so yun yung tinatanong yung ability ng isang tao na mag-supervise so ang tina- ang hanap natin sagot dito ay span of control So, lagi niyang tatandaan sa span of control. Ganito kasi sabi sa amin ng instructor namin para mas madali namin matandaan dati. Na nag-review ako. <clears throat> Kunwari nasa isang barka and then kung ilan yung pag dumipa ka at ilan yung kasya sa, kasyang babae <laughs> so, no? kasyang babae sa pagdipa mo yun lang yung capacity mo yun lang yung uh, limit mo. So, yun lang yung span of control mo yun lang yung makukontrol mo. So, yun. So, effective naman. And yung pangalawang paragraph, yung does the rest of the supervisory power is delegated to his immediate subordinates for them to conduct the supervision of organizational members and uh, at the low level. Ito naman ay uh, definition ng ating delegation of authority. So, kaya nga, kapag hindi kaya ng isang supervisor no, na makumand ang lahat, magbibigay siya ng authority sa trusted uh, subordinates niya para siya mag... Uh, mag-supervise dun sa iba. So, kung halimbawa, si chief uh, o police natin dito sa ating bayan, umalis, may kailangan puntahan sa ibang lugar, so, ibibigay niya yung uh, tungkulin sa kanyang subordinates, no? Ayan. How about unity, uh, unity of command and chain of command? So, related yung dalawang yan, nas parehas silang nasa ilalim ng scholar principle. So, unahin natin yung unity of command. Ano sabi dyan? Sabi sa unit of command, kailangan iisa lamang ang boss, iisa lamang ang supervisor ng isang organisasyon. Kasi kung mayroon mang dalwa o higit pa ano, na nagkukumand sa ating isang organisasyon, ay chaos. Chaos na nga abutin. Kasi yung isa oo ang sagot, no? yung isa hindi. Which is pareha silang supervisor. So sino susundin mo dun? So magkakaroon ng conflict. Kaya dapat ang sabi, Uh, may mayroong unit of command isa lamang ang nagkukumand isa lang ang boss sa isang organization or agency um, 
chain of command naman. Ano naman yung chain of command? Ito naman, sinasuggest dito the, that the communication should ordinarily go upward. Ano? Through established channel. So, mayroon tayong ni-established na channel. Yung, yung information dapat uh, dumadaan doon. So, halimbawa, si patrolman may report. Kailangan dumaan siya sa kanyang uh, superiors. Ano? Sa mas nakakataas sa kanya. Doon niya i-report. Hindi pwedeng i-report na kagad yun kay Chief PNP. Ano? Kasi magulo yun kung, sa, kung ay, ilang patrolman meron tayo tapos kay Chief PNP siya mag sila lahat magre-report. Di ba? Napakagulong sistema nun. Kaya sinasabi natin na kailangan mayroong established uh, channel. Okay? Okay. Next. 11. Integrated Act of 1975 dated August 8, 1975 established the Integrated National Police or INP composed of the Philippine Constabulary as Nucleus and the Integrated Local Police Forces as component under the Ministry of National Defense. So under the Ministry of National Defense. So ito yung tip ko dito. Kapag ka nakakita ka ng mga... Uh, date date na ganyan na mayroong 1970s pataas 1975 panahon ni Marcos yan no? so sa multiple choice isa lamang yung uh, batas I mean yung presidential decree sa panahon lang ni Marcos yun diba so isa lang yung nakikita kong uh, presidential decree dyan so ayun yung isasagot ko kung ako yun kung hindi ko alam yung uh, information about the ano the question Pero kung alam mo naman, edi mas maganda. Ano? Simulan natin sa una. Republic Act 4864. Ano yung Republic Act 4864? Ayan yung Police Act. Police Act na tinatawag. Ayan yung nagtatag ng Police Commission. Na ngayon ay National, uh, National Police Commission. Under the Office of the President. Tapos sumunod dyan, yung Presidential Decree. 765 nga. And then 10 years later, yung EO 1040 kung saan yung administrative control ano na ang ating kapulisan ay napupunta ulit sa Napolcom okay and then yung presidential uh, act number 175 naman ayan naman yung insular constabulary number 12 all of the following are members of the people's law enforcement board so pleb Ayan. So, mamaya na natin itakil kung ano yung pleb. Ano? Or itakil na natin pala. So, yung pleb, konting pahapyaw lang, yung People's Law Enforcement Board, sila yung nag, uh, tumatanggap ng mga citizens complaint sa ating mga kapulisan. So, kapag ka mayroong isang complaint ang isang citizen, as doon sila pupunta sa People's Law Enforcement Board. And ang gagawin ng, ng pleb, I-analyze nila, check nila kung kaninong jurisdiction mapupunta yung kaso. Kung baga yun ay sa chief of PNP, sa mayors, or sa plebe mesmo. No? Yun nga yung ginagawa nila. So, ang tanong dito, sino ang members of the People's Law Enforcement Board? So, three members chosen by the Peace and Order Council from among the respected members of the community. Kasama yan. Any barangay captain in the city, municipality concerned Chosen by the Association of Barangay Captains, kasama yan. Any member of Sangguniang, barangay, uh, Sangguniang Panglunsod, kasama yan. Ang di lang kasama dito yung letter D. A bar member chosen by the Integrated Bar of the Philippines. Chosen by Integrated Bars. No? Number 13. In the Philippines, an agency which requires direct supervision And, administra uh, ad and administration over the PNP was the National Police Commission. And its equivalent in Canada is, ay ito na, police comparison. Isa sa pinaka uh, mahirap, ano, mahirap, kailangan memorize mo yung mga uh, police organizations uh, in different countries. So medyo mahirap dito. So ang suggest ko sa inyo, i-familiarize nyo lang yung ganyan, yung katulad nyan. equivalent ng Napolcom Napolcom sa ano sa ibang bansa. And of course, yung mga highest rank and lowest rank ng isang bansa. So tandaan niyo yung lagi kasi kung man, kung mayroon mang itanong sa police comparative 
uh, about sa ganyan, about sa police organization sa ibang bansa, yun lang yun, kadalasan. Yung equivalent ng NAPOLCOM and yung equivalent ng rank. Ano? Highest rank and lowest rank. So sa number 13, ang sagot dito is, Uh, Ministry of Public Safety of Canada. Ministry of Public Safety Canada, sorry. So, yun ang sagot. <clears throat> number 20, number ano to? Number 14. Number 14. A progressive and multifaceted law enforcement organization taking strong lead in the fight against 21st century crime. Sino ba yan? Royal Canadian Mounted Police, PNP, Australian Federal Police, and Royal Thai Police. The answer in this question is letter C, Australian Federal Police. Sila yung uh, nanguna ano, sa paglaban sa 21st century crime. Australian Federal Police. 15. The chief of PNP is headed by commissioned officer with the rank of police general and equivalent with the rank of uh, Metropolitan Police Force of. So, yung Metropolitan Police Force sa London yan. So, ano daw equivalent ng high rank natin sa, London, sa Metropolitan Police Force? So, yung constable hindi na kasi lowest rank yan. Commissioner, General or uh, commission, Commissioner General. So, number 15 is letter letter C. Tama ba? Letter C. Commish, uh, general. <clears throat> yeah, tama. 16. The equivalent of patrolman of the PNP in the rank structure with the Royal Canadian Mounted Police is so patrolman of the rank na ang tinatanong. Ang, ang kanilang uh, lowest rank doon ay tinatawag nila ang police constable fourth class. Ang nila is commissioner. 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 Yan. Number 17. The following are the basis for the confiscation of firearms. Except, so confiscation of firearms ito ay sa mga security guard. Ano? Tinanong yung security guard. Letter A. When the firearm is actually being used in the commission of a crime, of course. When the firearm is, uh, when the firearm has just been used in the commission of, of a crime. Kasama din yan. Letter C. When the firearm is, uh, when the firearm being carried by the security guard is unlicensed or firearm is not authorized by law and regulation for his use. So, hindi authorized. Like for example, A uh, 9-gauge shotgun, hindi sila authorized unless uh, sinabi ng batas. Ano? Yung mga high caliber na rifle, so hindi sila pwede magdala niyan kung walang exception. So yun. So kasama din yan. When the confiscation of the firearm is directed by the, or, uh, by the order of prosecutor. So hindi ginagawa ng prosecutor. Yun, ano? So the answer this question is letter D. Okay. 18. <clears throat> Number 18. The following are advantage of the company guard force except high caliber and receives higher salary. Yan, advantage nila yan. B, provides better service. Of course. Letter C, can be trained to handle some of more complex security duties. Kasama din kasi mayroon sila mga training ano, specific sa kanilang company lang. So, isang advantage yun. Ang hindi lang nila advantage dito ay mag-required uh, sila na mag-join sa union. So, mayroong contribution yun. So, doon sila medyo uh, tagilid. So, yun ang sagot. Ito D. 19. The police officers in the police community present render 24 hours duty with prescribed division of two ships, three ships, four ships, or every, day other, or every other day. So, they have four ships. Letter C. The ideal daily on-duty hours for a patrol officer is 
ideal ha, ideal lang hinahanap. Ideal is 8 hours. Pero in true and totoong buhay, uh, flexible lang kanilang ano, schedule. So kahit anong oras. Pwedeng 12 hours, no? Minsan pa nga nagti-24 hours, ano? Sa totoong buhay. So, pero kapag sa verdict exam, ideal daily duty ng isang patrolman o isang police officer ay 8 hours. 21. The equivalent of police general in Hong Kong police force. So, high strength, ano? Ang equivalent ng police general sa Hong Kong ay police commissioner. Yan, police commissioner. Okay. 22. In the Philippines, the premier law enforcement agency is the Philippine National Police, which is supervised by the NAPOLCOM, National Police Commission. In Japan, its equivalent is the National Police Agency or the NPA, yung equivalent ng ating PNP, which is under the administration and supervision of ayan, National Public Safety Commission. So, yun yung equivalent ng NAPOLCOM ng na Japan. Yung Prefectural Public Safety Commission naman, sila naman yung nagsusupervise sa mga prefectural police. Anong ginagawa ng mga prefectural police na yun? Sila yung nag uh, iintindi ng mga license ano, ng ating mga citizens sa Japan and uh, traffic. Sila yung nag-aayos ng traffic sa Japan. Prefectural Public Safety Commission. Hmm. 23. The Indonesian National Police The Indonesian National Police is otherwise known as so tinatanong yung uh, tawag sa police ng Indonesia. So ang sagot dito ay letter A. So iba-iba. Kapag ka sa provincial, ang tawag nila ay Polda. Kapag ka sa regional, Pulwil. Pag sa city and municipal, Porles. And pag substation, Polsec. Pero pag national, Purli ang tawag nila. Number 24. The equivalent of Napolcom in Myanmar. So ito na naman tayo. Equivalent. Ang Napolcom in Myanmar is letter Okay, tingnan muna natin. National Public Safety Commission, hindi na kasama yan. Prefectural Public Safety Commission, hindi na rin kasama kasi sa Japan yan parehas. Pag pipilihan na lang natin yung letter A and letter C. So, ang sagot dito is letter C, Ministry of Home Affairs, number 24. 25. The equivalent of NAPOLCOM in Cambodia. So, guys, dito sa ating mga, sa police comparative, uh, i-familiarize nyo, ano? Yun nga yung sinasabi ko sa inyo, yung equivalent ng NAPOLCOM at saka yung highest rank and lowest, lowest rank ng isang bansa. So, madami-dami yun. Kaya, Ngayon pa lang, magbasa-basa na kayo para kapag ka malapit na, refresh na lang ng refresh. Hindi nyo naman kailangan i-memorize, no? I-familiarize nyo na lang kasi madami dyan, mayroong iba-ibang bansa, Ministry of Interior, pare-parehas ang ano, ang kanilang, ang kanilang ano, Napolcom, equivalent sa Napolcom. Katulad nung sa, dito sa ano, ngayon. Twenty-five. The equivalent of Napolcom in Cambodia, yun nga yung tanong natin, is letter A, Ministry of Interior. Okay, number twenty-six. The rank equivalent of Police Director General of the PNP in Indonesian National Police. Police Director General or Police General ay tinatawag din nilang ano police general police general pareha sila Philippines and uh, Indonesia police general na rin lowest rank nila ay itong letter C second baya uh, bayang kara okay 
Number 27. In the Philippines, the PNP is headed by the chief with the rank of police general na ngayon, police director general. And it's equivalent to Royal Malaysian Police is Inspector General, Police Supervisor, General, Police Constable, all police rank 4. Yung CND hindi mo na sasama yan kasi lowest rank yan. A and B na lang yung pagmimilihan natin. So, ang, ang sagot dito is Inspector General of Police. Yan. Madami-dami palang police comparative. No? <clears throat> 28. The police organization regarded as total gunless police force. Ayan. Sino yan? National Public Safety Commission. Hindi yan kasi napul kong yan. Equivalent. Ano? Prefectural Police. National Police Agency ng Japan or Prefectural Public Safety uh, Commission. The answer in this question is Prefectural Police. 29. This policing strategy of Japan is otherwise known as police back system. Itong police back system na ito, uh, inadapt natin ito sa Philippines. Ano? Yung mga uh, community present. Ayan yung letter B. Kuban policing system. Meron silang mga police box. Kung dito sa atin ang equivalent na yung mga presinto natin. So, anong pinagkaiba ng community-oriented policing system sa problem-oriented policing system? Yung community-oriented policing system, ito yung uh, relasyon ng community at ng police. So, community and police relation. Ano, nagbibuilding sila ng working and trusting relationship to, uh, sa community para mas, mas may bigay nila ng efficient yung kanilang service o yung police service ng isang uh, police. Ano? So, nag, basa sa community-oriented policing, yan ay uh, community and police relationship. Yan. Yung problem-oriented policing naman, ang nangyayari dito, yung, yung, mga, ano, yung mga problema, ano? yung mga crime and disorder na nangyari na, mag, uh, gagawa sila ng mga strategy no? para, ma, uh, para, para ma-analyze nila yun, para mas sa susunod na Tapos sunod na mangyari yun, alam na nila yung gagawin nila. Mas effective na yung kanilang response or strategy na gagawin. <clears throat> Ayan. 30. Police Lieutenant Marcos has a remaining 10 months in the PNP service before compulsory retirement. Is he qualified for promotion considering that he the mandatory requirements? He has the mandatory requirements siguro yun. So, Police Lieutenant Marcos has remaining 10 months daw, Lieutenant, in the PNP service before the compulsory retirement. Is he qualified for promotion or for appointment considering that he has the mandatory requirements? The answer is no. No. Ang sabi sa section 25 ng RA 8551, ang sabi doon, except for the chief PNP, no? except for the chief PNP, no PNP member who has less than one year of service before re uh, reaching the compulsory retirement shall be promoted ano? on higher rank or appointed on any other position. So yun yung ano doon. Kung, kung si Police uh, Marcos ay isang Police General, pwede siya. Pwede siyang i-promote pa. Pero kung hindi, uh, tapos remaining niya is 10 months na lang, uh, hindi siya pwedeng i-promote or i-appoint sa ibang agency. Okay? Sa ibang uh, position or rather. Sorry. Okay. Next. 31. Exhausted of being police officer, Police Executive Master Sergeant Thomas, after accumulating 27 years of active service, decided to avail the benefit of optional retirement. Police Ex Executive Master Sergeant Thomas will be entitled to a monthly retirement benefits of Ayan. So, yan yung ano, Multiple choice, 50, 65, 62.5, and 67.5. Parang namali ang ating uh, answer, uh, ano dito ah, letters ah. <coughs> so 31. Okay. So exhausted daw of being a police officer. 
si Executive Master Sergeant Tomas after accumulating 27 years. So, mangyayari, paano ba? Um, ang, ang tinatanong dito ay yung ating uh, retirement benefits. So, ang sabi sa retirement benefits, kapag ang isang police officer ay nakapag-serve na ano, ng 20 years in service, kapag ka nag-optional, kapag, kapag ka nag-avail siya ng optional retirement, agad-agad meron siyang 50% na uh, retirement benefit sa kanyang basic salary. So halimbawa, yun nga, si Thomas, 20 years siyang nag, uh, nag-servisyo, tapos napagod na siya, nag-optional retirement siya. So meron siyang 50%. So halimbawa, 30,000 ang kanyang sahod, kunwari lang. Kung mag-optional retirement siya at naka-20 years na siya, 15,000 ang mga makukuha niya kada buwan ano, na retirement benefits. Pero, kapag ka si Master uh, Sergeant Thomas ay nag-serve pa more than 20 years. No? Bukod sa 20 years, kapag ka naka, ano ba, 26, 27, ganyan, bawat isang taon, no, pagkalampas ng 20 years, ay mayroong dagdag na 2.5%. So in this case, mayroon siyang 27 years. Ibig sabihin, 2.5 times 7. So that will be 17.5. So idadagdag mo yun ngayon yan sa kanyang 50%. So ang sagot dito ay 67.5% of his base pay. So th- that's the answer. Pero yung pagtaas na yun, ng percentage na yun, ay hindi dapat tataas sa 90%. So halimbawa, nakapag-serve uh, na si uh, Police Executive Master Thomas ng 36 years. 90% na yun. Kapag ka 37 hanggang so, susunod pa mga taon, hindi natataas yun hanggang 90% lang kapag nag-retired siya. Okay? Wait lang, baka may nakalimutan tayo. Wala. 32. The uniform personnel have the option to receive in advance and in lump sum his retirement pay for the first 5 years. The payment of requirement benefits in lump sum should be made within uh, within blank for from effectivity date of retirement of or completion. So, ito ay kadugsong nung uh, 31 na question. Ang sabi dyan, pwede daw i- uh, kunin ng advance, ano, in advance or in lump sum yung kanyang retirement benefit for 5 years. Pero, makukuha mo lang yun within, uh, kapag ka nag-retire ka within uh, 6 months, letter D. Within 6 months. Okay, next. Minum lang tubig. 33. Patrol woman Mindo is newly appointed member of the police organization. After five of active service, or five years of active service, he was given 10% of his base pay in addition to his salary. What do you call the 10% given to patrol woman Mindo for five years of active service. Ayan. So, ang tawag dyan ay longevity pay. So, every 5 years, meron silang 10% na madadagdag sa kanilang uh, base pay. So, ang base pay nila ay 30,000, madadagdag, madadagdag ganyan ng 10% pagka nag, nag-active service na sila for 5 years. Pero yung pag-add ng 10% na yun every 5 years ay hindi dapat mag- uh, o susubra sa 50%. So, that will be 25 years, no? Hanggang 25 years, 50%. Uh, kapag uh, lumampas ka doon, uh, hindi na matadagdagan ng 10% pa yung iyong uh, base pay. <clears throat> Tawag doon ay longevity pay. 34. Police Lieutenant Mendoza retired from the police service due to total permanent physical disability incurred during the police operation. What will happen to his retirement benefits? Letter A. He will receive 50% of his base pay in case of 20 years of active service. B. He will not give, uh, be give retirement benefits because he was disabled. Letter C. He will receive 80% of his last salary. D. He will receive on 50% of last regardless of the year's active service. <clears throat> Excuse me. The answer in this question is letter C. He will receive 80% of his salary. Automatic yan. And, and ibibigay pa sa kanya yung buong uh, taon ng kanyang sahod. So bukod dun, uh, 
every month makakatanggap siya ng uh, 80% ng kanyang uh, base pay. So kung 30,000, yung 80% uh, 80% ng 30,000 yung makukuha niya na retirement benefits. 35. The PNP is the premier law enforcement agency in the Philippines which is tasked of enforcing law and arresting law violators. Included also the, uh, in the powers and functions of the PNP is the operation against anti-gambling activity which under the control and supervision of mayors in their respective jurisdiction, provincial directors in the, their respective jurisdiction, local government executives in their respective jurisdiction, NAPOLCOM in all levels. The answer in this question is letter C, local government executives like mayors, no? Sila yung... Uh, Sila yung may jurisdiction dyan sa mga anti-gambling activity na yan. Like for example, sabong, uh, illegal na pasugalan. Sila-sila yung mga uh, yung mga mayors natin dyan, yung mga governor natin dyan. Sila yung nagpapatigil. Ano? Sila yung naghuhuli o nagdadirect sa ating PNP para hulihin yung mga nag, uh, nag uh, gumagawa ng anti-gambling activity like sabong or uh, illegal na pasugalan. So yan. Number 36, as a general rule, the local government executives shall exercise operational supervision and control over the PNP, okay, in their respective jurisdiction, except blank days following the preceding and preceding the national and local barangay elections. So, yan daw. General rule, local government ang mayroong kapangyarihan sa operational and uh, supervision and control. Ng, ng Philippine National Police sa kanilang respective jurisdiction. Pero kapag ka panahon ng eleksyon, ano, ang sagot dito is 30 days. 30 days bago mag-eleksyon at uh, pagkatapos ng eleksyon, ang nakakahawak or ang mayroong operational supervision and control sa PNP ay ang COMELEC. Okay, number 37. <clears throat> All local government executives, including the mayors, are deputized representative of NAPOLCOM. Thereby, the mayor is vested with authority to choose from blank eligible recommended by the provincial director to, the, uh, to, be, to be the chief of police of his city or municipality. So mayroon daw pamimilian. Ilang, ilang uh, person ang pamimilian ng ating mayor na maging... Uh, chip ng kanilang uh, kanilang ano city or municipality kung saan ito ay recommended ng ating provincial director mayor ang answer ay 5 pag governor ano sa regional ang regional director ang magano magre-recommend sa governor ay 3 so para mas madaling matandaan kapag mayor ilan ang words uh, ilan ang Letter ng mayor, lima. Limang, limang letters ang mayor. So, five yun. Five ang pamimilian. So, yun ang ginagawa ko. And then, kapag ka-governor, ilang bigkas ang governor? Governor. Tatlo. So, pamimilian niya yung tatlo. So, yun din yung tip na sa amin dati nung aming uh, doktor. Okay, next. 38. What disciplinary machinery acquires original jurisdiction? Ano? to citizens complaint filed against PNP personnel wherein the penalty does not exceed 15 days. Ayan. Sinasabi ko nga kanina na yung ating pleb na yung pleb ang tumatanggap ng kanilang uh, mga reklamo. Tapos ngayon, i-cognizance o titake cognizance ng, ng pleb yun at titingnan kung uh, kanina mapupunta ang jurisdiction. Kasi kapag ka ang uh, penalty ano ang suspension ay hindi bababa ng o hindi tataas ng 15 days sa so chief of police lang yon so yun ang sagot diyan that does not exceed chief of police kapag naman nag exceed ng 15 days but not more than 30 days ng suspension ay sa ating mayor at pagka naman nag extend no ng 30 days or dismissal na dismissal nang bibigay yun ay sa ating pleb na 
So second the question. Pagka pagka ang isang police officer uh, na dismiss o uh, dismiss ng pleb. Ngayon hindi siya sang ayon sa pagdismiss ng pleb. Kanino siya pwedeng mag-appeal? Pwede siyang mag-appeal sa tinatawag nating Regional Appellate Board. So yun yung pinag-aapilan ng ating pleb, ano? Ng ng mga decision ng pleb doon ina-appeal. Okay? Kapag ka naman administrative cases, kumbaga nagkaso sa iyo ay administrative mismo, limbawa IAS or the CPNP at ikaw ay na-dismiss or na-suspend ka, ah, pwede ka mag, uh, mag-appeal sa National Appellate Boards. Basta tandaan nyo, ang Regional Appellate Board, uh, ina-appeal niyan, nag-appeal dyan yung mga uh, case, ano, decided case ng PLEB. Pag naman IAS and CPNP sa National Appellate Board. Okay? 39. A police a policeman refused to blatter an incident because he was still sleepy in ta, in the ta, at the time. This best illustrates A. Non-pheasants B. Malfeasants C. Misfeasants or D. All of the above. So ito yung mga misconduct natin. Isaysay natin. Ang tamang sagot muna, non-pheasants. Non-pheasants, hindi mo paggawa ng iyong tungkulin. Ano? Dapat mong gawin yan, hindi mo ginawa. Trabaho mo yan, hindi mo ginawa. So, dahil siya ay naantok pa, hindi niya ginawa, hindi niya binatry yung uh, incident, then it will be non-fessance. How about malfessance? Okay, malfessance. <clears throat> malfessance naman, pag sinabi naman nating malfessance, hindi mo dapat gawin sa trabaho mo, pero ginawa mo. No? During work, During job, uh, gumawa ka ng hindi mo dapat gawin sa isang trabaho. Halimbawa, isang police officer nag-bribe, isang, isang police officer na nangotong. No, hindi dapat trabaho yun. Hindi mo, tra- hindi mo trabaho yun pero ginawa mo. So, it, uh, yun ang tawag nating malfessance. Pag naman misfessance, improper, ano, improper na pag-conduct ng iyong trabaho. Halimbawa, uh, nagtatrabaho ka, wala sa standard operating procedure. Nagpapatrol ka, isang isang ano lang isang diretso lang tapos pa pangangangangang ka pa hindi ka pa hindi mo pa hindi ka pa nagaano nagmamatyag ano so miss pisan yun kasi tinatamad ka kunwari improper ginawa mo nga pero improper ayun 40 a policeman accepting bribes is an example of ayan sinabi natin kanina accepting bribes hindi mo dapat gawin sa trabaho mo pero ginawa mo Malfeasance. 41. The law provides that the term of office of the members of the plebs is 41 5 years, 10 years, 3 years, or 8 years. The answer is 3 years. 3 years ang uh, pinoprovide na term ng ating members of pleb. <clears throat> 42. In general, the pleb take cognizance of refers uh, of or refers the complaint to the proper disciplinary or adjudicatory authority within how many days upon filing the complaint. Ano? Kapag ka nag-file ng complaint ang citizen, meron lamang 3 days ang ang pleb para i- uh, para mag-take ng cognizance and refer yung complaint sa proper disciplinary or adjudicatory adjudicatory authority. So halimbawa, sa mayor, sa halimbawa sa chief of police or sa, sa mismo kanila. So meron silang 3 days para gawin 'yon. The period by which the pleb should decide from the time the case has been filed. So meron silang 60 days, ano? Ang pleb ay merong 60 days para mag-decide sa case na uh, na na final sa kanila. <clears throat> Number four, the status of, of the procedures conducted by the pleb is summary in nature. Mm-hmm. B. It is conducted in accordance with the due process, of course. C. Without strict regard to the rules and evidence. Ayan. Yung tatlong yan ay kasama. Yan ang status ng procedure conducted by the pleb. So, all of the above. <clears throat> Number 45. The decision of the pleb 
shall be final and executory. Final and executory. Provided that a decision involving demotion, no, pag demotion na, or dismissal from the service may be appealed by either party with the regional appellate board within how many days from the receipt of the copy of the decision. So kapag ka pala dismissal na, o kaya ay demotion na lang rank ang uh, nakataya, ano, ang dinicide ng pleb, pwede silang mag-appeal sa regional appellate board for how many days? Ilang ilang araw sila binibigyan ng pagkakataon? So, uh, ayun. Meron silang 10 days. In the preceding question, in case the respondent decided to file an appeal with the regional appellate board, how many days should the RAB decide from the receipt of the notice of appeal? So, magde-decide din yung regional appellate board sa appeal, ano? At meron din silang 60 days para gawin yon. Wait lang, number 46 tayo, no? Okay. Number 47. Okay. <clears throat> Police Executive Master Sergeant Lopez was charged before the pleb for grave misconduct and before the RTC for homicide in connection with the death of Mr. Kiko, a balot vendor. After several hearings, he was dismissed by the pleb no? Dismissed by the pleb. Dismiss siya. How many days Police Executive Master Sergeant Lopez can file an appeal upon receipt of the copy of the decision? So, meron siyang 10 days. Meron siyang 10 days para um, ibigay, ano? O mag-appeal sa uh, pleb. Sa regional appellate. Ah, board. Oo, oh, yan. Tama. Number four, uh, 48. Assuming that Police Executive Master Sergeant Lopez was not convinced with the decision and he was to file an appeal. So, yun nga. In what agency he will file an appeal in order to reconsider the surrounding circumstances of possible acquittal? So, yun ay sa Regional Appellate Board. Letter A. So, kapag ka internal affairs service sa National Appellate Board sila nag-appeal uh, kapag ka, yun ang may hawak ng kaso, yung IAS. 49. In the foregoing question, Police Executive Master Sergeant Lopez is facing administrative, yan, administrative case na, for grave misconduct and criminal case of homicide for the death of Mr. T. Since the penalty is 6 years and 1 day or more, Police Executive Master, uh, ba to? Uh, Lopez pa rin siguro yan shall be placed under the preventive suspension for a period of how many days during the trial of the case so si uh, police uh, executive master sergeant Lopez no kapag uh, di ba homicide eh, more than 6 years in one day ang ano niyan ang kaso niyan pag pala uh, more than 6 years in one day ang, ka ang kaso or ang penalty sorry uh, magka magkakaroon ng preventive suspension for a period of 90 days, ano, 90 days. 90 days siyang isususpend. Number 50, last. As a rule, in criminal cases, upon the filing of complaint against PNP personnel, where the penalty is 6 years and 1 day or more, the erring PNP should be placed under the preventive suspension not exceeding 90 days. So, yun nga. From, so, simula kailan? Final judgment ba? Arraignment? Filing complaint or start of trial. So the answer in this question is arraignment. Pag binasahan ka ng sakdal, pag binasahan ka na, yun, simula na yung uh, preventive, uh, suspension sa iyo, which is not exceeding 90 days. So ayun, natapos na ang ating Leia. Huwag na natin, huwag na tayo magpatumpit-tumpit pa, no? Inam lang akong tubig. Simula na natin sa criminalistic. 
criminalistic composed of uh, the question then sa board exam criminalistic ay 20% ano kaya medyo dapat pag-aralan din natin to number 1 first sentence joke as joke is an example of uh, red lie second sentence usually when a person lies there is no physiological reactions that occurs in his body. So, ang tanong, ang sagot, both statements are incorrect. B, both statements are correct. C, state, uh, the statement 1 is correct and the statement 2 is incorrect. And letter D, first statement is incorrect and the first, uh, second statement is correct. <clears throat> So, isa natin. Joke is an example of red lie. Ang red lie, no, mga kaibigan, is involved political interest and motives. Yun yung mga mga lie, ano, mga pagsisinungaling na involves political interest and motives. Uh, <clears throat> part of uh, communist propaganda. So, yung mga communist party natin, yung mga kabulaanan nilang sinasabi, uh, matuturing natin yung na red lie. So, ito ay prevalent in communist uh, infested nation. In the Philippines, sabi natin na yung NPA, kapag may mga propaganda sila, masasabi natin na uh, red lie yun kasi yun nga ay involves political interest and motives. Yan. So, joke is, an, is not example of red lie. Kasi ang joke is an example of jokusi lie. Ano yung jokusi lie? A sarcasm. So, u ang sagot, oo, pero ang sinabi mo hindi. So, sarcas sarcastic answer. Ano? So, it can be also a joke. <clears throat> so, joke si Lai. Ang example ng uh, yung joke. So, hindi yan. Uh, hindi yan red lie. So, the first statement is or the first sentence is uh, incorrect. Ito namang number two or second. Usually, when a person lies, there is no physiological reactions that occurs in his body. Which is incorrect din. Kasi nga, uh, kapag ka nagbubulan tayo, nagsisinungaling tayo, no? may mga physiological reaction like uh, breathing, blood pressure, respiration natin, yung pamawis natin, and iba-iba pang uh, physiological reaction na kung saan yun nga yung ating uh, dinedetect sa ating polygraph examination. Kaya nga tayo mayroong polygraph examination test para madetect yung mga physiological reaction na yun kapag ka nagsasalita tayo. No? Kapag ka nagsisinungaling tayo. So, both statement is or are incorrect. So, letter A. <clears throat> Number two, first polygraph, uh, first, polygraph can be used for criminal investigations. Second, insane person is suitable to become a subject of lie detector test. So, first answer, uh, first sentence, sorry, polygraph can be used as criminal, uh, used for criminal investigation, of course, no? gumagamit tayo niyan. Bakit tayo gumagamit ng polygraph examination kahit na hindi naman ito admissible as evidence in court? So, gumagamit tayo ng, criminal investig uh, ng polygraph in criminal investigation dahil uh, ito ay naglilimita or ini-eliminate nito. Ano? Yung ibang suspect na hindi naman talaga possible na suspect. Or, halimbawa, lima yung, ano, lima yung suspect, suspected person. Sin sinilalim mo sila lahat sa polygraph examination. And dalawa lang doon yung nag-positive. So, imbis na isa-isahin mo pang interrogate o interviewin yung, uh, o interrogate na nga, yung ating mga, yung limang suspected person, dalawa na lang sa kanila kasi sila yung dalawa yung nagbigay ng positive uh, result. Ano? So, yun yun. Second question, insane person is suitable to become a subject uh, of lie detector test, which is incorrect. Hindi pwedeng uh, isa ilalim ano, ang mga insane person or mga mentally unstable na tao sa ating uh, polygraph examination. Paano malalaman ang mga physiological reaction nun? Yun nga lamang mga kinakabahan. Ano, kailangan pa natin pakalmahin bago natin isa ilalim sa polygraph examination. So, hindi pwede yan. So, sagot is, first statement is correct and the second statement are incorrect. Uh, is incorrect pala, sorry. Number three. 
the law which defines in, uh, the law which defines the duties and responsibilities of arresting detaining and investigation officer to inform the rights of a person detained arrested or under the custodial investigation so dito tinatanong yung batas na nagdedefine na mayroon na responsibilidad ng mga uh, arresting officer detaining and investigation officer na sabihin ano yung mga karapatan ng isang naaresto or under custodial ng investigation so ano ang answer dito so alamin muna natin yung answer ang sagot dito ay Republic Act 74 38. Ayan. And ito namang ano, Article 3, Section 12, Bill of Rights. Ang sabi dyan, Any person under the investigation of a crime or offense shall have the right to be informed of his right to remain silent and have competent and uh, independent counsel, preferably by his own choice. So dito, sinasabi lamang na <clears throat> Yung karapatan ng tao, ano, karapatan ng tao na magkaroon niya ng uh, ng council niya and manatiling uh, tahimik. So yung RA 7438, yan mismo yung ibatas na uh, nagbigay ng responsibility sa ating mga arresting, detaining, and investigation officer to inform the rights. Yung mga rights nga ng isang arrested or detained or under custodial investigation. Act 3815 yan ha, hindi yan RA. Act 3815 as amended is yung revised penal code. And RA 8551 ay yung Police Reform and Reorganization Act. Number four. This is used to allow cardio system to be pressurized. Cardio system to be pressurized. So guys, imagine nyo yung ating spigmo manometer. Ano ba yung spigmo manometer? Yan yung ating, uh, yung ginagamit ng mga doktor kapag para malaman yung blood pressure natin, yung pinipindot-pindot, yung squeeze-squeeze, para ma-pressurize yung ating uh, blood pressure cuff, no? Para malaman yung ating blood pressure. So, ang tanong dito, it, it, this is used to allow cardio system to be pressurized. Ano yung nagpipressurize sa uh, cardio system? Anong nagpipressurize sa spigmo manometer? Eh, di ba ga yung bulb, ano? Yung tinatawag nating pump valve assembly. Yung ini-squeeze-squeeze yung... Uh, okay? Yung mga pressure. Ang nagbibigay ng hangin doon yung pump valve assembly. So, ang sagot dito, mag-cuff. Pipitin mo yung vents para ma-release yung hangin o yung pressure doon sa blood pressure cuff. And also, isasara mo rin yan pagkakailangan mo ng pressure. Yun yung vents. Five. It is known as the longest pen and polygraph uh, machine. Tandaan natin meron tayong apat na pens sa ating uh, polygraph machine. Dalwa para sa pneumograph pens. Ano? Pneumograph pens meron siyang dalawang uh, pens which is uh, ang haba niya ay 5 five, five inches parehas. Galvanograph pen yung pangatlong pen natin. Pangatlong pen and the longest pen sa ating uh, polygraph machine which is uh, 7 inches ang haba niya. So ang sagot dito ay letter B. And yung cardiospemograph pang apat. Pang apat yan. Yung chemograph naman, isa yung machine, ano, isa yung motor kung saan yan yung nag-a-adjust nag ng paper chart 6 uh, inches per minute ang ina-adjust niyan. So meron yung synchronized motor kung saan uh, ina-adjust niya yung papel kada uh, isang minuto ng 6 minutes ah 6 inches sorry per minutes yan 6 inches per minutes tandaan 6 it is known as the rise of the body temperature after death due to rapid and early putrefactive changes or some uh, on some internal or some internal changes so ito daw ay sudden uh, Rise of body temperature after death due to rapid and early putrefactive changes. So nangyayari pala ito kapag yung isang bangkay ay mabubulok na kung mag magkakaroon ng putrefaction. No? Ang sagot dito ay post-mortem caloricity. Caloricity. Yan. Post-mortem caloricity. Ang nangyayari, simulan muna natin sa una, sa algor mortis. Ano? Yung algor mortis or uh, cooling of the body after death, <clears throat> 
magsisimula yan, di ba ga? Uh, 20 to 30 minutes pag napatay ang tao. At uh, kapag ka nagsimula yan, utay-utay ang bababa ang temperature hanggang sa makuha niya o maka, makamit niya yung ambient temperature ng lugar. So kung 30 degrees Celsius lang yung lugar, so within an hour, ano, every hour kasi, uh, mababawasan ng 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius ang temperature ng katawan. So 37 degrees Celsius ang, ang, ano natin, ang temperature natin. Kada isang oras, mababawasan ng 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius ang ating temperature. Hanggang sa makuha niya yung ambient temperature. Yan yung tinatawag nating algor mortis. Ano naman yung uh, <clears throat> liver mortis? Liver mortis is uh, tinatawag nating lividity of the blood. Ano? Lividity. Postmortem lividity. Yung accumulation ng dugo ng tao kapag ka namatay. Sa under the influence of the gravity. Kung saan naka, kung nakahiga yung tao, ibig sabihin nasa likod yung accumulation ng blood. Pag nakadapa, nasa harap naman yung accumulation of blood. So mayroon dalawang uri ng liver mortis. No? Yung tinatawag nating hypostatic lividity and yung diffusion lividity. Pag sinabi nating hypost uh, hypos hypotasic lividity. Pag sinabing hypotasic lividity, hindi pa fixed yung ating uh, dugo. So kapag ka pininch mo, kapag ka kinurot mo, kapag ka uh, din, tinuro mo ng daliri, ano? Diniinan mo ng daliri, yung dugo um, aalis pa dun sa kanyang pwesto. Pero kapag ka diffuse na, hindi na aalis yun kahit kurutin mo yun, kahit ipinch mo yun, kahit itusukin mo ng daliri mo yun, ano, pindutin mo ng daliri mo yun, hindi na aalis yung dugo doon. Kasi yung diffusion nasa labas na ng uh, <clears throat> nasa labas na ng blood vessel at fixed na yun. So yun. Ang tanong, ilang oras bago maging fixed ano, yung ating dugo sa postmortem lividity or liver mortis? Yun ay 8 to 12 hours. So kapag ka ang bangkay ay ay ba, nakakita ka ng bangkay at ginalaw mo at yung dugo ay lumipat pa sa ibang parte ng katawan. Ibig sabihin, hindi pa siya patay more than 8 to 12 hours. Um, sa kabalik tara naman, kapag ka kapag ka yung bangkay uh, ginalaw mo and then hindi na nabago yung uh, libidity ano yung dugo kung saan nakapuesto yung dugo or fix na ibig sabihin more than 8 hours na siyang patay so yun postmortem rigidity or rigor mortis so <clears throat> mayroon dalawang uri ng rigor mortis ah mayroong stages ang rigor mortis sorry primary placidity secondary uh, tapos uh, postmortem rigidity and then the sec uh, secondary placidity so tatlo So mamaya na natin explain yan pero ang postmortem rigidity ay yung pagtigas ng katawan ng isang uh, tao. <clears throat> Nagsisimula siya within 2 to 4 hours. So kapag ka namatay ang tao, ang mangyayari, primary placidity muna, lalambot yung bangkay, mawawalan ng relaxation. Ano? Then 2 to 4 hours after death, magsisimula na yung ating uh, pagtigas ng ating bangkay magsisimula yun sa eyelid o kaya ay sa jaw so kapag ka nakita nyo sa board exam may pamilyan eyelid or jaw parehas nasa, nasa, nasa multiple choice piliin nyo yung eyelid kasi yun, yung, yun din yung pipiliin ko kung ako yung ang mag exam pero kung wala yung eyelid uh, sa jaw so yun sa dalawang yun <clears throat> within 2 uh, to 4 hours magsisimula at matatapos yun o makukompleto yun within Uh, 6 to 12 hours so kung nakakita ka ng bangkay at natigas na tigas na ibig sabihin patay na yun more than 6 to 12 hours and then after ng after, after makumplito nun mayroon pa siyang 24 to 36 hours magtatagal so kung pagkatapos ng uh, 24 to 36 hours pinakamababa yung 24 hours pinakamatagal yung 36 hours na matigas ang bangkay after nun magsisimula na yung tinatawag nating secondary placidity which is yun na yung start ng pag-decompose ng bangkay yung tinatawag nating putrefactive of uh, 
Yan, putrification. Ayun. So mamaya i-discuss natin ng mas maayos yan dun sa ibang question. Okay, ito, ito, ito. It is the stage, number seven. So the answer in this question pala is post-mortem caloricity, no? Number seven. It is the stage when the muscles are relaxed and capable of contracting when it's stimulated. So pwede mo pang galawan. Galawin. Pag, pag uh, nilupi mo yung, ano, yung siko, pwede pa. The pupils are dilated. Maki. And the spinchner are relaxed. And there is incontinence of urination and defecation. So yung muscles daw ay relaxed and capable of contracting when stimulated. So pwede pang magalaw. Ano? The pupils are dilated, the spinchner are relaxed, and there is incontinence of urination. So anong stage ito? Ito yung tinatawag natin stage of primary flaccidity or period of muscular irrit irritability. So nangyari kapag ka namatay ang isang tao na lagot na ng hininga, marirelax yung muscle niyan. No, pero pwede mo pang galaw-galawin, no? <clears throat> ang mangyayari diyan, yung mga nagko-contract o yung mga nagpipigil sa ating mga ihiin o sa ating mga dumihin ng mga muscle, mawawala ng uh, pagpigil. Kumbaga, mawawala ng control kasi nga relax na sila. And then kapag ka mayroong ihiin or dumihin yung isang uh, namatay na tao, ang ang tendency Uh, lalabas yung mga waste na yun, human waste na yun. Dahil nga relax na yung muscle natin. So doon nangyayari yun sa ating primary flaccidity or period of muscular uh, irritability. Okay? Mamaya natin sabihin yung mga susunod na question kasi, uh, letters kasi meron pang susunod na questions. Ito naman. A stage when the muscles become flaccid and no longer capable no longer capable of responding to mechanical and chemical stimulus and the reaction becomes alkaline. So ito naman, tinatawag natin niyang secondary flaccidity. So anong nangyari kanina is stage of primary flaccidity tapos nagkaroon ng post-mortem flaccidity muna yun bago yung stage of secondary flaccidity. Ito yung last natin. Ano? So ito yung sagot dito sa ating let number 8, yung stage of secondary flaccidity. Ano nangyari, pagkatapos nga ng rigor mortis, lalambot na ulit yung bangkay, ano? Within 24 to 36 hours, yun yung secondary flaccidity. Kung baga, mabubulok na yung bangkay. Uh, hindi na siya capable of responding mechanical and chemical stimulus. So kahit na galawin mo siya, kahit na malamigan siya, hindi na magbabago yung uh, reaction ng ating uh, skin. Ano? So dahil putrefactive na yan, Kinakain, yung, kinakain ng ating enzymes mismo yung ating uh, katawan, yung ating acid. Kinakain mismo, ng, kinakain mismo ng acid natin yung ating katawan. So, nagkakaroon ng mga chemical reaction, mabaho, secondary flaccidity, no? or secondary relaxation. Number nine, the stage when the whole body becomes rigid due to the construction of the muscle. This develops three to six hours after death and may last from 24 to 36 hours. So, ito nga yung pangalwa. So, mauna yung stage of primary placidity, rigor mortis, and then stage of secondary placidity. <clears throat> so, ano daw nangyari? When the whole body becomes rigid in contraction of the muscle, this develops 3 to 6 hours after death. So, madidevelop siya, completely develop actually, pag uh, 6 to 12 hours. Pero mag-onset yan, o magsisimula yan, 2 to 4 hours. So, yun. Tandaan natin. <clears throat> and matatapos siya within 24 to 36 hours minimum ay 24 hours and maximum is 36 hours. Yung ating post-mortem rigidity, cadaveric rigidity, oh, cadaveric rigidity or rigor mortis. So pare-parehas lang yung definition yan. Number 10. Camera ito. Ano, photography. A basic exposure of a film ASA 200 at bright sunlight with a shutter speed of 1 over 125. So tinatanong dito ay yung ating foot number. Ano ba yung foot stop na yan? Ang tawag, uh, ang tawag din sa mga ito ay foot stops or F numbers. They also called uh, diaphragm. Oh. No, interrupt tayo. So sorry for inconvenience, no. So balik na tayo. 
So, kala ko hindi ko na mariretrieve yung video. Nandito pa pala. So, 98% na lang yung nanonood. So, sana dumami pa ulit. Sorry talaga, guys. Number 10 tayo ng criminalistic. Hintay lang natin yung iba. Kung may question kayo, pwede nyo akong pwede nyo i-comment. Tas, siguro hindi ko muna mababasa. Masahin na lang namin mamaya. Oo, namatay yung cellphone. Nag-shutdown. Sorry. Okay, balik tayo. Criminalistic number 10. Hopefully may... So, ayan, 20 person na. Hintay lang natin iba. <clears throat> So please paki-share no para yung iba na nanonood kanina mapanood nila ulit. Sorry sa interruption. Good morning sa inyo. <clears throat> hindi pala naka-charge yung cellphone kanina eh. Kala ko naka-plug hindi pala. So yun nag-shutdown tayo. Okay, game ulit. Number 10. Ulit. Anong sabi? A basic, a basic exposure of a film ASA at, at bright sunlight of shutter, uh, with the shutter speed of uh, 1 over 125. So, yun nga, tinatanong dito ay yung F numbers o yung ating F stops. Ang tawag sa mga ito ay F stops or, is, or F numbers. So, they also called diaphragm. No, yung diaphragm ng camera, ay yun yung nag-change ng laki ng butas ng ating lens or lens aperture. So, basta pag, tin pag tinanong, ano yung nag-change ng butas, ano, ng lens opening ng isang camera, yun na yung diaphragm. Which is, may sign siya ng mga ganyan, F stops or F numbers. Ito yan. <clears throat> yung, ano pinagkaiba ng lens opening sa diaphragm? Yung lens opening or lens aperture na tinatawag, yun mismo yung butas, yung laki ng butas ng ating lens. At yun namang diaphragm, yun yung nag-change ng butas na yun. So, ang tanong dito, ang sabi kasi ng ano, ng, ang sabi kasi sa diaphragm, no? kapag ka daw ang, ano, the bigger the number ng F, F number, the, the smaller the lens aperture become. Yun ang sabi. So, ibig sabihin, kapag malaki ang F numbers, katulad yung F16, ibig sabihin, maliit ang butas niyan. Ibig sabihin, kapag maliit ang butas, mas konti lang yung uh, liwanag na nakukuha niya. So, saan ginagamit yung mga ganyang uh, klase ng butas or ng lens opening? Sa mga sobrang liwanag na uh, scene. Ibig sabihin, kapag uh, sobrang liwanag, <clears throat> Kailangan mo ba ng kailangan mo ba ng sobrang daming liwanag or ilaw na kailangan pumasok sa iyong uh, lens uh, sa camera para sa exposure ng iyong uh, film, di ba hindi? So kailangan maliit lang yung butas. So yun ang sinasabi diyan. So ang sagot dito sa question na ito ay letter C F8. Bright sunlight. Pagka bright sunlight, standard yan ay F8. Pero pag super bright, pwede natin gamitin yung F16 hanggang F16. Pinakamalit na butas. Ano? Pagka naman hazy sunlight or yung hindi masyadong maliwanag, yung hindi masyadong uh, bright sunlight, no? hazy sunlight tayo, gagamitin natin na yung F5.6. Medyo malaki yung butas niya kaysa sa F number 8. Kapag ka naman gabi or hapon, dapit hapon or sunlight, uh, sunset, ano? Ang gagamitin natin ay F number 2 or F2. Wala dyan sa pamilyan. 
Pero kapag uh, dal sun, uh, kapag uh, sunset, ano or madilim, gagamitin natin yung F number 2. Kapag ka naman sobrang dilim or yung night photography na tinatawag, gagamitin natin yung sign na B o tinatawag yung na bulb which is uh, maximum na open yung uh, lens aperture natin. Ibig sabihin, kaya, kaya siya maximum na open kasi kailangan kailangan niya ng madaming liwanag na masasagap kasi nga sobrang dilim ng paligid. So kapag ka mal, sobrang liwanag ng paligid, gagamit tayo ng pinakamaliit na butas which is yung pinakamalaki ang F number. Yung F number 16 or F number 8. So sa standard, F number 8 ang gagamitin. So yun yun. <clears throat> So, next. 11. In lie detection, the interrogator chart probes on subject every after the taking of each chart. Post-interrogation is conducted at what stage? So, tinatanong dito yung uh, pag-conduct ng post-interrogation. Anong, anong stage yung ginagawa? Ginagawa ba yung done every after taking of each chart? B. When fully convinced, that the subject is, subject's guilt is based on the charge taken. C. Done only, done only on subjects who refuse to cooperate during the examination. Or D. Done immediately before the conducting pre-test interview. So, ang hinahanap natin ay post-interrogation. Pagkatapos ng, uh, siyempre post, ibig sabihin after yan. Ano? Nangyayari ang interrogation na yan kapag ka, ang sagot dito ay letter B. When fully convinced, of the subject's guilt based on the charge taken. So, pagka nakita sa chart ng polygraph examination na positive, ano, mayroong kinalaman yung isang sub suspect or subjects, um, <clears throat> magkakaroon ng interrogation. Interrogation, more rigid yan kisa sa interview. So, talagang parang papaaminin mo si subject sa kanyang guilt. So, yun. So, when, the uh, when fully convinced of the subject's guilt based on the charge taken. Sorry sa interruption kanina, ano? Tuloy-tuloy na tayo. <clears throat> okay, 12. In gunshot wounds, when there is evident burning of tissues, pag sinabing evident burnish, burning of tissues, masasabi din natin yan sa other term na singeing. Singeing. S-I-N-G-I-E-N-G. Singeing. And blackening of the skin or gawa ng pulbura, gawa ng usok, natawag natin is smudging. Meron pang isa, tattooing. Ano? Isa pa rin yun sa makikita mo dyan. Yung tattooing, yun yung uh, pagtama ng unburnt o yung hindi nasunog na gunpowder sa skin natin kung saan nag-iiwan siya ng parang mga uh, tusok-tusok o mga bakat-bakat na parang tattoo. Ano? Mga tusok-tusok na pula-pula. Which is pagtama, dahil yun sa tama nung uh, mga unburnt gunpowder. Maliliit. Parang tattoo nga siya eh. Tattooing. Parang tama ng tattoo. Ayun. And yung gunshot wounds. <clears throat> so, ang tanong... In gunshot wounds, when there is evident burning of tissues, blackening of the skin, it it may be cer uh, ascertained that it is near contact fire, meaning that, that the distance of the body to the guns is approximately, answer is 6 inches. So kapag ka 6 inches, ang distance ng ating uh, gunner sa at, uh, kanyang target or sa kanyang victim, makikita mo yung mga sign na yun, yung singeing, smudging, yung tattooing and yung gunshot wounds. So, yun yung makikita mo. Kapag ka naman more than 6 inches but not more than 36 inches or 3 feet ang distance, so hanggang 3 feet, ano, ang makikita mo lang dun ay yung tattooing at saka yung gunshot wounds. Ano yung tattooing nga kanina? Yun yung mga tama ng unburnt, uh, unburnt gun powder. So, more than, uh, sa more than 6 inches hanggang 36 inches, makikita mo pa yung tattooing. Lalo na kapag ka nakahubad or sa open na uh, skin, tumama yung, ano, yung gunshot wounds. Ano? Pagka naman sobra ng 36 inches o more than 3 feet ang distance ng gunner sa ating uh, victim, ang mangyayari doon, wala nang ibang sign kundi yung gunshot wounds na lamang. Wala nang tattooing, wala nang smudging, and wala nang singeing. Okay? Next. <clears throat> 13. This refers to the intentional or deliberate application of means to shorten the life of a person. It is intentional or deliberate application of the means to shorten the life of a person. So, intentional and deliberate, ibig sabihin active. So, active euthanasia. Ano nga ba yung active euthanasia? Yung uh, 
imbis na maghihirap pa yung tao, ano, imbis na, halimbawa, halimbawa sa hayop, kar- karaniwan yan eh, imbis na maghihirap pa yung ang hayop, tutuluyan mo na siyang <clears throat> patayin. Kung sa tao naman, uh, naghihingal na, uh, ikaw na mismo yung tatapos sa buhay niya, ano. Yung passive euthanasia, uh, ano din yan, mercy killing din yan, ang gagawin naman, karaniwan sa ospital, kung ang bumubuhay na lang doon sa tao ay aparatos, na uh, breathing uh, breathing apparatus ano or nasa coma state na siya siya ay kumbaga machine na lang ang bumubuhay uh, hahayaan na lang yun nung mga doktor na mamatay ano alsin yung apparatus or hanggang sa pagka naghingala hindi na i-revive kapag uh, nag ano nag 50-50 so ganyan yung mga passive euthanasia yung orto na orto tanasya other term yan ng euthanasia na ibig sabihin uh, pag sinabi natural or normal manner of death or allowing to die ano or letting to die so yun orto nasya other term of passive euthanasia 14 there is an uh, there is absence of the application of the means to accelerate death but the natural course of the disease is allowed to have its way to extinguishing the life of the person. Ay na nga yung sinasabi natin na uh, ano nga sabi? There is absence of application of the means of okay. <clears throat> positive ah uh, positive positive euthanasia number 14. Okay, number 14. Okay. Number 15. The death of uh, okay ulit the death certificate is necessary before burial this statement is of course is true kailangan ng death certificate 16 known as the uh, known as a physical injury located neither at the site nor opposite the site of the application wala daw sa wala daw sa uh, location ng uh, ano ng site of uh, force at saka sa opposite site ng application of force but in some areas offering least resistance ano uh, least resistance to the force applied so hindi yan coup injury hindi yan country coup injury hindi yan coup country coup injury it is locus minoris resistentia resistentia least resistance nag-o-offer ng least resistance halimbawa pumutok ang ugat sa ulo dahil sa pagsakal mo or tiniwarik mo binitin mo pati warik pumutok ang ugat sa ulo dahil sa blood pressure no or uh, pumutok ang bulb ng puso. So yun yun, nag-offer ng least resistance. Coup injury, kung saan yung uh, application ng force, andun yung tama, yun yung injury. Ano ba, sinuntok mo, nagkaroon ng bukol sa noo. Di ba? And coup country injury naman, opposite. Alimbawa, tinulak mo sa noo, and then um, tumama yung ulo sa pader. And, I mean, pagkatulak mo, naalog yung utak. Naalog yung utak, ano, sobrang pagkatulak mo siguro sa ulo. Nagkaroon siya ng tumor o kaya ay brain lesion dito sa ating likod ng ating uh, ulo. So opposite side nung pagka nung application ng force mo. Yung country coup injury, ayan yung makikita mo sa uh, application ng force, halimbawa sa noo, magkaroon ng bukol and dun dun sa likod magkaroon ng uh, pagdugo sa ating utak. Ayun. Example niyan ng coup country coup injury. 17 It is a nail biting which may uh, which may lead to maceration of skin and infection. So ito ay mga disorder, mental disorder to. So ang sagot dito sa number 17 ay uh, letter A. Onychophagia. Oni onychophagia. Okay? Hindi ko alam kung paano i ano yun, i pronounce by onychophagia. Ayun. Yan daw yun yung pag uh, nail biting yung pagkagat-kagat uh, ng kuko which is mental disorder yan yung bruxism and uh, yung bruxism muna tayo yung bruxism ay sa condition which uh, you grind or clench your teeth yung bagang pinagkikiskis mo yung uh, ngipin mo o, tapos tumutunog ayun yun yung bruxism yung pagkiskis ng ngipin yung trichotillomia trichotillomia yan naman yung hair pulling disorder nagbubunot-bunot ka ng buhok. Mental disorder din yan, na classified as obsessive-compulsive uh, disorder. 
Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, it is otherwise known as grinding of the teeth. So, yung nga sinabi natin kanina. It is frequently seen in the mental retarded person and can lead to abnormal tooth wear. So, that is bruxism. Bruxism. Number 19. What do you call the form of strangulation with the assailant standing at the back? Nasa likod, ang assailant. And the forearm is applied in front of the neck. So, yan tinatawag nating mugging. Ginagamit ng uh, assailant yung braso niya para yun ang mismo ang ipang strangulate sa ating victim. So, mugging ang tawag doon. Yung garuting, gumagamit ka ng ibang no, belt or neckties para ipang uh, garut, no, ipang ano mo, ipang strangulate ulit mo sa, uh, sa victim mo. So, yun yun. Hopefully, hindi mag-shutdown ulit yung ating cellphone. Huh? And, nasan tayo? Garating, maging man manual strangulation naman, yun naman yung paggamit natin mismo ng kamay sa pagsakal. Ano? Yun. 20. It is known as early form of homicidal hanging. Usually found in southern state of United States. It is usually practiced by Americans against the Negros who commit crime against white Americans. Whenever the colored offender is apprehended, they are hung by means of rope on a tree or some similar objects. The Negros are executed without due process of law. So prevalent daw ito doon sa United States dati nung ang mga negros pa or ang mga black american ay kanila pang alipin ano so wala pang kalayaan ng amerikano uh, black american noon san so, tawag sa ganung process ng pag uh, pagpatay no sa paghang ay tinatawag nating uh, lynching 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 yan b letter b number 21 it is a shallow and horny part of a large feather usually from goose, and was used for writing on parchment. So yung parchment, yan ay uh, animal skin ano, na, na dinaan sa chemical process para maging uh, sulatan. So ang ginagamit pala doon na pang sulat ay letter A, quill pen. Yung quill pen, quill pen <clears throat> ang gumawa niyan, actually hindi, hindi alam po sino gumawa niyan, hindi alam po sino naka-invento niyan, pero kapag kala mo ba si uh, Saint Isidore of the uh, Saint Isidore of uh, to, of Seville. Saint Isidore of Seville. Yan. Hindi siya yung gumawa pero siya yung lumalabas na sinasabi na nag-imbento niyan ng quill pen na yan. So kapag kalumabas yung sa board exam, di siya na rin yung isagot nyo. Kasi yun yung nasa, nasa handouts natin. Saint Isidore of Seville. Okay. Yung mga fountain pen na yan, yung na still point pen na yan, makikita natin yan mamaya. 22. Who patented the first ballpoint pen or ballpoint writing tool? Who patented the first ballpoint writing tool? Okay. A. John Loud, B. Lewis Motorman, C. Brian Duncan, or D. None of these. So, ang nagpatended niyan ay si John Loud. Siya yung nag- uh, Siya yung unang gumawa ng ballpoint pen. Yung mga HBW na ginagamit natin ngayon, uh, kumbaga yan ay pinaganda na lang, pero yung unang gumawa niyan, nagpatented niyan ay si John Loud. Si Lewis Waterman naman, ang nag ng fountain pen. Si Brian Duncan, siya naman yung gumawa ng first uh, paper making machine. So sa papel naman siya. 23. What is the oldest form of ink? So, sinasabi na ang pinaka matandang uh, form ng ink ay ang pinatawag na Indian ink. So ang ginagamit na ingredients doon ay uh, agiw o yung usok ng gasera. Ano yung fine suit ng gasera. Ang tawag sa amin dito sa Quezon ay agiw which is uh, tinatawag sa English na lamp black, lamp black. So lampara, uh, ilaw ng lampara. Uh, ano? 
yung usok ng lampara. <clears throat> yan, hinahalo yun sa tubig and then hanggang sa, in, minimix yun hanggang sa makuha yung consist, consistency ng isang uh, ink and then yun, pwede na nilang ipangsulat. So yun daw ang pinakamatandang uri ng ink sa mundo. <clears throat> 24. This means that the forger has trouble matching the paper, ink, or writing materials to exact date it was supposed to have been written. Ano yan? Ano yan? Anibawa, may forger. Yung pinapa-forge sa kanya na na ano, na documents uh, sinulat noong 19, uh, sabi nating 1970, panahon ni Marcos. <clears throat> Ang ginamit na ballpen ay galing sa 1960s. Ang ginamit na papel ay galing nung uh, sabi na nating 1970s ang papel. And nung in-execute yung sulat, uh, mga siguro na 1978, ano? Eh ngayon pinapagawa, yung sa forgery yung, ano, yung document na yun, ngayon pinapapurge. Mahihirapan yung, uh, mahihirapan yung forger na kumuha ng paper, paper taka ink na galing sa 1975, uh, 1970s at 60s, ano? Yung mga writing materials na yun, paano niya yung makukuha? So, ang tawag sa ganong problema ng mga forger ay anachronism. Anachronism. Counterfeit, ibig sabihin, paggaya, pagkopya ng isang object. Ano? Utter, yung paggamit ng counterfeited uh, object. Watermark, yan yung makikita nating uh, watermark, yan yung makikita nating mga uh, sa mga papel. Kapag uh, sinilag natin sa ilaw o sa sikat ng araw, makikita natin yung parang invisible, semi-invisible sibol na na pangalan halimbawa ng branch or ng company ng isang paper. So yun, uh, binagamit nila yung para sa kanilang trademark, no? Yung watermark na yan. <clears throat> Number 25. Number 25. What is the first material known to man? Ano yun? Siguro writing material to pala. Ayun. What is the first writing material known to man? It is papyrus. Papyrus, although ang pagsulat ay nagsimula sa China, ang papyrus ay natagpuan sa o naimbento sa ang uh, halaman na tinatawag natin papyrus plant. Ano? Yung ang itsura niyan, kung nakakita kayo sa probinsya, kung nakapunta na kayo sa probinsya or may mga probinsya naman dito, na nahihiga sa banig ano yung parang pinagtagpi-tagpi na uh, dahon ng uh, buli sa amin yun eh parang ganoon din yung papyrus pag uh, pagtatahitahin mo siya or ihahabi mo siya or wibub mo para ma maging uh, writing material para pwede mo siyang sulatan yun yung papyrus yung parchment nga um, skin, skin of the animals number 27 these are writings produced by the subject after evidential writings have come into dispute and solely for the purpose of establishing his contention. So ito daw ay sinusulat o pinuproduce ng isang subject uh, after the evidential writings have come into dispute. So para ma so para mapaano para mapatunayan yung kanyang uh, contention ano para ma, mapatunayan yung uh, na ano ba sabi natin na against sa sa writing na yun, iba? Uh, sulat, writing. Para patunayan na, ano ba, hindi sa kanya yung sulat na yun. Ang tawag pala dun ay post letem motam exemplars. Ayan. Post letem motam exemplars. Requested, stand, uh, requested standard and collected standard. Anong difference? Yung requested standards, <clears throat> yan yung mga known as genuine handwriting such as signature and legal papers. Ano? Documents, letters, memoranda, etc. Kung saan sinulat yan sa daily course of life or business or social uh, life. Halimbawa, yung mga commercial documents mo, public documents, private documents na mga sinulat mo, mga signature mo. Ayan yung tinatawag nating collected standard. Pag naman requested standard, yung mga documents na yun, or handwritings na pinagawa sa iyo para sa comparison. So, yung... Requested standard, those signatures and other hands writings written by individual upon request for the purpose of comparison. Okay? 28. 
In order to be sufficient, there must be at least 10 to 25 standard signature for examination. That, is, that statement is true. True yan. <clears throat> Kailangan ng 10 to 25 standard. 29. Who discovered that white light is composed of different colors or different wavelengths? Walang iba kundi si Isaac Newton. Sa yun, nakadiscover ng different wavelength ng ating white light. So, sinasabi niya na ang Ang white light pala ay composition ng different shades of light. Makakabuo ka ng white light. Okay? <clears throat> 30. The lens opening, also known as relative lens or sabi natin relative aperture, is the indicator of light transmitting capability of the lens. Which opening admits more light to pass through its medium? So sinasabi nga natin kanina, na kapag ka maliit ang butas, ibig sabihin kunti lamang yung uh, liwanag na tinatanggap nito o kaya na kailangan ng ating camera. So the bigger the F numbers, the bigger the F numbers, the smaller the lens aperture or relative aperture becomes. So ibig sabihin, ang pinakamaliit dito ay ang F16. Ang pinakamalaking opening ay lens uh, F number 2.8. So, ang tanong, which opening admits more light? Ano daw, ano daw lens opening ang nakakakuha ng mas madaming ilaw or liwanag to pass through its medium? Eh, di syempre, yung malaki ang butas, which is F2.8. Uh, Ayan. <clears throat> Next, what is the birth year of photography? That is 19, uh, 1839. 1839, tanda nyo. Birth year of photography. Number 32. Ato, my favorite subject, ballistic. A bullet has, yun daw mga bullet, ano, mga projectile na mayroong butas o cavity sa kanyang unahan, sa dulo, sa tip. I think, hollow point isang ori yan ng damdam bullet na kung saan ang mga damdam bullet, ano, dinisinyo sila para hindi uh, lum, uh, hindi lumampas not, pen, uh, not to penetrate to target nag expand sila kapag gato mama sa target kaya sila mayroong uh, deep hole sa kanilang uh, tips so ang damdam bullet yun nga so isa, isang example ng damdam bullet ay yung hollow point natin which is uh, <clears throat> dinesign para hindi mag penetrate at magkaroon ng uh, more damage ang hollow point. Hollow point. Kasi kung uh, isang ano lang yan, round bullet lang yan, halimbawa sa 9mm, kapag ka pinuntok nyo ng police, at mayroong tao sa likod, uh, maaaring madama yung tao sa likod na hindi naman yun ang target. So, kung gusto mo ng uh, isang bala na hindi tumatagos, o kaunti ang capacity na tumagos, pero malakas, ano, may malakas na, ano, na impact, so, gumamit yan ng hollow point bullet. <clears throat> Spitzer bullet. Yan naman yung tawag ng mga Americans and British no, sa, mga, sa mga bullet na uh, uh, matatilos or yung mga pointed bullet na tinatawag. Katulad ng mga rip, sa mga rifle, uh, rifle rounds. So, ang tawag nila ng mga British doon at ng mga Americans ay Spitzer bullet. Streamlined bullet naman. So, isa din tong pointed bullet. Ano? Pero yung likod niya or yung base ng ating uh, projectile or ng ating bullet ay maliit ang diameter. Pinaliit ang diameter. Kung baga, pointed sa dulo and then sa base ay maliit ang diameter. Bakit? Anong, anong, anong purpose nun? Ang purpose ng streamlined uh, bullet ay to reduce air drag. Ano? Kasi kapag ka daw ang object na nagtatravel forward sa air eh, ay malaki or bilog, mas malaki yung uh, re air resistance na, na nakakalap nito. So kung gaano kabilis ang ang isang uh, object na lumilipad sa air, eh, mas malakas yung uh, air resistance o yung pagpigil ng hangin sa pagtalsik ng object. So, ibig sabihin, kapag malakas ang air resistance, ang tendency, mas mabagal yung, uh, yung ating uh, projectile at mas, uh, mas malapit lamang yung, uh, yung distansya na mararating ito. However, kapag ang ating uh, projectile ay patilos, tapos ang huli ay pa paliit, maliit kasi sa katawan, magkakaroon ng air drag o magkakaroon ng magre-reduce yung air resistance nun kasi maliit lang yung projectile tapos mayroon pa siyang 
uh, mariridus pa yung air drag yung sa hulihan na hangin. So, ang, ang tendency nun, mas bibilis yung bullet natin, mas malayo yung madadating niya. So, yun yung tinatawag na stream light bullet. Ano naman yung hill bullet? Yung hill bullet, ginagamit yan noong uh, unang panahon sa mga uh, mga firearm na mga, uh, ang bala ay black powder ang gamit. Yung mga black powder na firearm. Kasi yung mga hill bullet, kung gaano kalaki yung case niya o yung cartridge case niya, ganun din kalaki yung diameter o ganun din kabilog yung diameter ng kanyang bullet. So, tandaan nyo lang, sa hill bullet, diameter ng body is uh, the same as diameter of the bullet. The diameter of cartridge case is the same as the diameter of the bullet. Okay? Tapos ginagamit siya uh, sa mga black powder uh, firearms. <clears throat> na sa ngayon ay wala na. Kunti na lang. Number 33. A general term for baton round. So, baton round, ginam, uh, ginamit sa Hong Kong yan, nagsimula yan as, uh, nagsimula yan as uh, rubber bullet. Ano uh, ano muna? Wood. Sa wood muna sila nagsimula. Tapos nakaka-inflict pa siya ng damage kahit wood pa lang. So, pinalta nila ng rubber then naging plastic. So, general term for baton round is plastic bullet. Ano naman yung fleshe shotgun or ito ay shotgun ammunition? Imaginein mo yung pakong bakya, yung pinakamaliit na uri ng pako, ginagamit sa pagpako ng mga chinelas, no? ng mga bakya noong unang panahon. Imaginein mo yung maliit na pako na yon, at yung ulo niya ay hindi, imbis na ulo ay fin or palikpik para mag-stabilize sa uh, ere. So, ang tawag doon ay flechette bullet. So, madaming ganun, madaming madaming parang pakong bakya, ipapasok mo yun sa shell ng shotgun. Madami sila doon. Then, pag pinutok mo, sa airy mag stabilize uh, tutusok yung mga fin na yun, uh, yung mga flechette na yun, yung mga flechette bullet na yun. Ayan. Mapapanood nyo sa YouTube, type nyo lang yung flechette bullet. Number 34. It is a mechanical operation employed in loading metallic cartridges which consist in turning over slightly or compressing the mouth of the metallic shell or case to hold the bullet in its place. So, isa-isahin natin. Mechanical operation daw siya. Employed in loading metallic cartridges. So, ibig sabihin, hindi siya pwede sa mga plastic ano. Which is consists of turning uh, over slightly or compressing the mouth of the metallic shell. So, parang kinocompress mo, pinip... Uh, Sinisikapan mo yung mouth ng ating metallic shell or case to hold the bullet in, in its place. So, ang nangyayari dyan, imagine mo yung plies, no? iipitin mo yung dulo ng, dulo ng ating cartridge case para yung bullet natin hindi mahulog sa gunpowder o hindi maalis dun sa mismo cartridge case. So, ang tawag sa ganong process ay crimping. Yung crimping, makikita mo yan sa bunga nga ng ating shell. Uh, yan yung nag-hold sa ating Uh, bullet. So parang indentation yan. Mayroon yung mga bakat ng machine dun kung saan naka-indent o nakabakat o nakalubog yung uh, unting bahagi ng shell sa ating uh, bullet. So naman ang pinagkaiba ng corrosion sa erosion. So erosion ay dahil sa chemical process while erosion ay sa mechanical. Yung erosion dahil sa kakaga, anibawa, yung ating barrel, yung gun barrel natin. Dahil sa wear and tear, ano, sa paggamit mo, ng barrel mo, katagalan, uh, yung rifling niya lumuag, yung rifling niya naubos. Uh, lumuag na yung bullet, hindi na, hindi na ganun kasikip dun sa bullet. So, so, so anibawa, yung firing, uh, yung ano mo, yung corrosive na priming mixture. Yung, ano nga yung priming mixture? Yung priming mixture, yun yung nag ignite sa ating gunpowder. Siya naman nagpo-produce ng yung gunpowder na naman nagpo-produce naman ng expansive gas na nagtutulak sa ating uh, bullet. So halimbawa, yung iyong uh, pupunta yun sa ating, dadaan yun sa ating gun barrel. Magkakaroon ng kalawang yung ating gun barrel. At dahil dun, sa kalawang, masisip 
it is a part of the shell or, or it is the part of the shell head on the base which indicates the name of the manufacturer and the year. Yun ay nasa ating head stamp, yung sa base, kung nasaan naka, nakalagay yung ating uh, priming mixture. Yun, makikita mo din yung pangalan ng manufacturer, no? and also yung kung kailan ito ginawa, at saka yung caliber ng isang bala. Ano naman yung shoulder, neck, at saka uh, yung body? Ano naman yan? So, isasayin natin, yung body, yan yung mismong uh, shell, yan yung mismong katawan ng uh, shell, ano, ng cartridge case. Yung neck at shoulder, makikita mo yan, ang karaniwan sa mga uh, rifle rounds or yung mga example sa M16, bala ng M16, bala ng AK. So yung may, yung mga yun mayroon silang shoulder at neck. Yung neck yung pinaka yung maliit na portion, yung paliit na portion ng isang uh, cartridge case. Tapos <clears throat> ang nagsusuport doon sa neck na yun ay yung ating shoulder. So basta tandaan mo ang nagsu ang nagsusuport sa neck ay ang shoulder. Ang neck usually nakikita mo lang yan sa rifle rounds. Number 36. Oh, laksang hangin na. It is a tubular metallic container which is designed to hold primer or priming, propellant, powder, and the bullet. So, ay, sorry. So, yun. Yun pala. Tubular metallic container which is designed to hold the primer or the priming mixture propellant powder and the bullet so para maging isang unit ang isang cartridge ang isang bala yun ang, yun ang ginagamit yung metallic container na yun which is yung ating cartridge case dun yan nilalagay lahat yung priming mixture yung gunpowder saka yung bullet so dun ina kumbaga pinagkukombine combine para maging isang uh, unit so it is cartridge uh, case pwedeng metallic or non metallic pagka metallic usually brass yan yung pinagsamang zinc and copper. Pagka naman ng metallic, plastic, mga ginagamit naman sa shotgun yan. Primer, yun yung nag-initiate nag ng ignition. Yung anvil, ah, ito yung anvil naman, di ba yung primer packet natin, ay yung primer cup natin, yung, yung nilalagay ng primer. Ngayon, papaluin nyo ng hammer or ng uh, firing pin. Yung pagpalo ng hammer or ng firing pin na yun, kailangan mayroon siyang pag uh, against, against sun. Mayroon siyang pagtamaan. Parang tadtaran kumbaga. Yun yung anvil na ginaga. Yun yung anvil na tinatawag. Nasa loob yan ng primer cup. So yun yung, uh, yun yung uh, sumusuporta sa primer cup. Ano? Para ma mapalo or ma-init yung ating priming. Make sure kapag ka pinalo ng uh, primer, ah, ng firing pin or ng Hammer. Okay? Ngamit ng gauge na yan. Panahon, panang hapon. <laughs> Nung unang panahon, ang gamit kasi ng mga tao na firearm ay yung ditingga or tingga ang bala. <clears throat> Ngayon, ang katulad ng mga masket natin, di ba? So, mga tingga ang bala nun. Ngayon, sa market, bibili sila ng uh, one pound of Uh, of lead or sa, sa kilo is kalahating kilo ng uh, tingga. Pag bumili sila ng kalahating kilo ng tingga at nakagawa sila uh, uh, yung tingga na yun, tutunawin nila yon hanggang sa makagawa sila ng bullet. So kung ilang bullet ang magawa nila doon, yun ang gauge ng kanilang shotgun or ng kanilang uh, firearms. Halimbawa, sabihin na nating 9 gauge. So in 1 pound or sa kalahating kilo ng lead or or tingga, ang nagawa mong uh, bilog na bala ay siyam. So, ibig sabihin, malaki ang butas ng iyong uh, ng iyong ano, ng iyong firearm, which is 9 na bala lang ang nagawa mo sa kalating kilo ng tingga. Eh yung 20 gauge, ano naman yun? Yung 20 gauge naman, 20 na bala naman ang nagawa mo sa kalating kilo ng tingga. Ibig sabihin, maliit lang yung butas ng uh, baril mo o ng firearm mo kasi 20 yung nagawa mo sa kalating kilo. Unlike dun sa 9 lang ang nagawa mo sa kalahating kilo, which is yung 9 gauge, pinakamalaking gauge ng shotgun. So, yun yun. Diameters and millimeters, ginagamit yun sa sa ibang firearms, sa mga rifled firearms and pistols and rifle. Okay? 38. 
It is considered as the original surface of the gun bore. Okay. Ang nangyayari kasi, kapag sa manufacturing ng firearm, ano, yung barrel natin, inilalagay ng rifling yan. So, ang tawag doon ay rifling. Yung paglagay ng uh, cylindrical grooves, ano, sa loob ng ating barrel. Aalisin ngayon doon yung uh, excess o aalisin doon ngayon yung yung ibang part ng ating gun barrel para magkaroon ng rifling. Pag inalis yung ibang part ng gun barrel, eh, ang, ang lalabas doon ay groves. Hukay, hukay groves. At yung lands, yun yung original. Yun yung original surface ng gun bore. Yun yung matitira sa inalis na uh, part ng ating gun barrel sa loob. <clears throat> okay? So, ang sagot dito ay letter D. 39. A pointed copper jacketed fired bullet is fired from. Okay. So, tinatanong is pointed copper jacketed bullet. Ay, saan daw pinapaputok? Pointed copper. Pointed ba bullet? Okay. E, ang sagot dito is rifle. Best uh, answer rifle. Although, nagaga, gumagamit din tayo ng pointed bullet sa pistol. Pero, hindi karaniwan yon. Ang kasi ang ginagamit natin sa pistol ay yung round bullet or yung uh, bull type bullet. Pero kapit, uh, cap, uh, copper jacketed din siya. Ibig sabihin mayroon din siyang jacket na uh, copper. Sa revolver, ang karaniwang ginagamit diyan ay yung mga lead lang. Mga hard cast lead, ano, mga tingga lang, wala siyang copper jacket. Pero mayroon din iba na gumagamit ng uh, copper jacketed na bullet sa revolver. Pero karaniwan talaga diyan ay yung mga Uh, hard cast lead lang yung mga tingga lang sa pistol yung mga copper jacketed pero hindi siya pointed sa rifle yun yun ang ginagamit natin pointed bullet or spitzer round sabi ng mga Amerikano at British okay 40 which of the following is an example of handgun okay itong pistol example of handgun yan itong revolver Example of handgun yan. But yung musket, example of rifle yan. No? <clears throat> so, ang sagot dito ay letter C. A and B dapat. A and B. Hindi A and C. A and B. Okay? 41. If you recovered a rimless iron cartridge, rimless iron cartridge case, you are certain that it fired from rifle, pistol, revolver, or A and C. So, pag sinabi natin rimless, ibig sabihin yung rim ng isang cartridge ay equal to the size of or the diameter of the cartridge case. Ginagamit natin itong rimless or yung equal ang, ang rim sa cartridge case uh, o nga, ay sa mga rifle and pistol. Okay? Gumagamit tayo nyan. Yung yun namang Uh, rebated type ginagamit yun sa pistol pero may, gumag may gumagamit din sa rifle pero lagi yung tatandaan na yung rim type ano yung mas malaki yung rim kisa sa body of the case ano sa diameter of the body of uh, cartridge case lagi yung ginagamit sa revolver ginagamit yung sa revolver so kapag ka nakakita ka ng rimless uh, ay cartridge, ibig sabihin, ito ay ginamit sa pistol or either sa rifle. Pero pag sa holder, kailangan dito ay rim type. Kasi yung rim type, mas malaki yung diameter ng rim niya, uh, mag-a-against yun dun sa chamber. Hindi papasok lahat yung uh, bala natin o yung cartridge natin sa loob ng chamber ng revolver. Puputok. Pero kapag ka pumasok lahat yun, eh di mawala ng... Uh, For, uh, wala mo wala nang ano yun ma kumbaga lalampas lang yung ano doon yung yung ano yung car, yung cartridge natin doon sa chamber ng ating revolver so yun a and a and b not a and c no <clears throat> 42 what is the amount of hard uh, what is the amount of powder used in load so yun ang tinatawag so pag sinabing load yung paglagay ng uh, powder sa ating uh, cartridge para sa ating uh, cartridge case ano yung squib load na tinatawag yan yung ulit natin hindi sapat yung powder charge sa loob 
para itulak palabas ng gun barrel yung ating uh, projectile or bullet. Ang tendency, babara ngayon yung ating bullet or ating projectile doon sa gun barrel natin. So, yun ang tinatawag nating squib load. Hindi sapat yung powder charge nung no? no, isang bullet or nung no? 43. It is a bullet fired from suspected firearm in a bullet recovery box to be used for comparison uh, with the crime bullet. So, ito daw ay bullet, no? Fired from the suspected firearm in bullet recovery box. So, pinapatok siya sa bullet recovery box to be used for comparison with crime bullet. So, anong ano to? Anong tawag dito? Ito yung tinatawag nating uh, test bullet. Yung crime bullet and evidence bullet, yan yung ating <clears throat> nakukuha sa crime scene. No? 44. All of the following except one does not belong to solid type of bullet. So guys, <clears throat> yung tracer bullet, full metal jacket, total metal jacket, yan ay mga jacketed bullet. Ano? Ibig sabihin, meron siyang uh, copper jacket. Anong pinagkaiba lang ng tracer bullet sa full metal jacket, total metal jacket? Yung tracer bullet, meron siyang uh, trace amount of uh, powder sa kanyang base ng bullet natin. Para kapag pinaputok natin sa gabi, uh, makikita natin yung uh, direction ng tama ng ating bullet. So, makikita natin kung tumatama ba tayo sa target. So, kaya tinawag na trace, tracer bullet. Pero yan ay isa ding jacket at bullet. Ibig sabihin, solid type din yan. Yung full metal jacket, uh, solid type din yan. Yung total metal jacket, solid type yan. Itong red, uh, lead round nose, Although solid siya, kung babasihan sa tanong, mas soft yung lead round nose. Ano? Kasi lead lang to wala tong jacket eh. Wala tong jacket na copper or any metallic ano, element. So, pinaka soft dyan kung tutuusin ay ang ting lead round nose. So, the best answer is letter D. <clears throat> 45. When the load of ammunition is defective, it is considered as, yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina, squib load. So, hindi sapat yung powder charge ng isang uh, ammunition. Ang, re ang result, babara sa gun barrel, ano, sa gun bore, yung ating uh, projectile. 46. It is known as upsetting or expanding of bullet on impact. Nagkaroon daw ng expan uh, expansion or upsetting ng bullet upon impact. Ang tawag sa ganong uh, klase ng bullet ay uh, hollow point. At ang mismong tawag dun sa pag-expand or pag-upset ng ating bullet ay mushrooming. Kung baga korte siyang mushroom, lumaki, uh, lumawak yung bullet. <clears throat> ang tawag dun ay mushrooming. So, nangyayaring mushrooming sa mga damdam bullet. Ano? Sa mga hollow point. Yan. Ano naman yung keyhole shot? Keyhole shot, ang nangyayari dyan, yung bullet, no, pag, paglabas sa ating uh, muzzle ng gun, <coughs> nagtumbling o nagpaikot-ikot. Hindi nag-ikot, hindi nag-spin o hindi nag-rippling. Uh, nag Siguro, dahil uh, maluwag na yung ano, maluwag, maluwag na yung gun barrel, hindi nagkaroon ng, uh, rif, uh, ng rotation yung bullet. So, nangyari, nagtambling, nagpaikot-ikot sa ere, sa travel. Tapos, nung tumama sa, ano, nung tumama sa target, sideways, ayun tinatawag na keyhole side, o keyhole shot. Imbis na pointed yung tama, naging sideways yung tama ng bala. So, para naman nga siyang keyhole, o yung uh, butas ng susian. Kasi nga, patagilid yung tama ng bala, ganun yung naging uh, itsura niya. Yung ricochet, ricochet, kapag ka yung bullet, ano, Yung projectile, tumama sa target, then nag-bounce. Tumalsik sa iba. So, pag tama sa, alimbawa, sa kantuhan, sa kantuhan ng pader, tumama, nag-bounce siya sa ibang uh, lugar. So, ricochet ang tawag doon. Tumalsik sa ibang lugar yung bullet. Yung yawing, or yo, ang nangyayari naman dyan, kapag kalampas, pag kalampas ng ating bullet sa ating uh, muscle of the gun, no? Hindi ka agad stable yung uh, paglipad ng ating bullet. Hindi agad-agad na tuwid yun. Hindi agad-agad na 
ganyan ang daanon. <clears throat> so mangyayari kapag kalabas niya sa pagkalabas niya sa gun muscle, 'di ba iikot 'yun gawa ng rifling. Ang ikot niya ganito muna. Halimbawa, ito yung ito yung point ng bullet, ito yung ating base. Ganito muna yung ikot niya. Yan. Hanggang sa tumagal, lilit na lilit yung spin niya hanggang sa magkaroon siya ng gyroscopic action. So ibig sabihin yung yaw wing yun yung unstable uh, rotation ng ating bullet, no? Hanggang sa makuha natin yung uh, gyroscopic action. Ang yaw wing ay normal lamang sa bullet. Kung makikita niyo sa YouTube yan, may slow motion ng kung paano nangyayari yung yaw wing. So i-search niyo na lang. <clears throat> Number 47, what is the term which refers to the hard shot? Ayan. Ito uh, Itong mga shots, ano? Shots, pellets. Yan ay mga bala sa ating shotgun. <clears throat> so, meron tayong tatlong uri, ano? Yan ang bala sa shotgun. Meron tayong bird shot na tinatawag, buck shot, and yung, yung single bullet na tinatawag nating slug. Yung, uh, unahin muna natin yung bird shot. Yung bird shot, yan yung napakaliliit na ah, siguro malalaki pa yung malalaki lang ng konti yung butil ng ano yung diameter ng butil ng bigas no yun yung bird shot madami yun para siyang buhangin ilalagay mo siya sa shell ng o oh, shell ng shotgun then pag pinaputok mo yun madaming ah, maliliit na budlitas ang tatama so ginagamit yung bird shot sa pag hunt ng duck or ng mga swan ano ng mga ibon kaya nga bird shot ang tawag sa kanya. Yung back shot, yan naman yung mga maliliit na yung mga maliliit na bultitas ng mga siguro siyam na piraso or anim na piraso. Yan yung back shot. Medyo malalaki siya sa bird shot. And yung slug is yun yung single type uh, lead na bullet ng shotgun. So ang tinatanong dito, what is the term which refers to the hard shots? So ibig sabihin na sa back shot sa ano? Hard shot daw. Meron kasing tatlong uri din ng uh, back shots. Yung mayroong Uh, inatawag tayong drop shot, shield shot, and low baloy shot. Unahin natin yung shield shot. Yung shield shot is the lead shot with addition of antimony. So, the answer in this question is letter letter 47, ano? letter B, ano? shield, shield shot. <clears throat> Hard shot, I mean ano siya? lead siya o tingga siya pero dinagdagan siya ng antimony, antimony para medyo tumigas yung lead yun yung uh, hard shot ang tawag doon or chilled shot yun namang drop shot yun yung normal yung bullet uh, yun lang lead ano lead lang siya without any uh, addition ng chemical so normal lang siya yung normal na type ng lead yung low baloy shot yun naman yung mga copper plated na uh, bulitas <clears throat> So, tingga, tingga siya tapos meron siyang copper plated. Meron siyang, sabi natin, parang uh, kaunti, kaunting plate na copper para mas matigas siya. Okay? Number 48. The tumbling of the bullet in its flight and hitting the target sideways. O, oh, sinabi ko na kanina, no? As a result of not spinning on its axis is known as uh, K-hole shot. So, yun nga. Pagtalsik ng bullet, uh, pagkalabas sa gun muscle, <coughs> di stable yung pag-ikot, kaya tumama ng sideways yung bala. So, ang tawag doon is keyhole shot. Yung gyroscopic action, yan yung uh, matining na pag-ikot ng bala. Kaya siya nakakuha ng gyroscopic action. Ibig sabihin, uh, napakatining ng bala sa, sa flight niya. Kaya napakatuwid niya and napakabilis niya gyroscopic action <clears throat> okay number 49 so two questions and we're done in criminalistic okay it is a bullet which is considered as automatic version of wad cutter bullet so ano ba yung wad cutter bullet yung wad cutter bullet ginagamit yun for practice practice targeting ano yung practice uh, firing kasi yung wad cutter bullet, lapad yung kanyang tip. So, pag nga naman tumama siya sa paper target, madali mong makikita yung butas na nagawa niya. Kasi nakat niya yung mismong paper na pinagtamaan niya. So, yun yung wad cutter. So, yun daw automatic version nun ay tinatawag na semi wad cutter. Okay? <coughs> Number 50. 
Number 15. He is considered an, as, as an expert in the field of submachine gun, also known as grease gun. So, yun yung ginawa niya, grease gun. Developed in 1941. Ito ay si George Hyde. George Hyde. Si Gordon Ingram, gumawa siya ng baril na tinatawag na Ingrams. Si Samuel Colt, isa sa mga uh, tinatawag nating uh, first practical revolver maker. Ano? Siya yung uh, one of the famous na gumawa ng uh, revolver. Yung tinatawag nating fist, uh, Colt Peace Maker. Yung Colt Peace Maker na yun, one of the isa sa pinakatanyag na, ano yun, na revolver yun nung panahon niya. Samuel Colt. Okay? Si Colonel, o Colonel Calvin H. Goddard, father of forensic ballistic. Siya yung naggamit ng bullet comparison para uh, malaman. Ano? Maggamit sa court as evidence. So, tapos na tayo. So, simulan natin sa crime detection and investigation which is third, uh, 15% ng ating board exam. <clears throat> Inom lang ang tubig. Crime detection, madaming uh, lumalabas dito kung saan saan area. Silent killer ito. Ay 15% lang yan. Uh, lahat ng area pwedeng lumabas dito sa crime detection kasi ito ay uh, niya, crime detection and investigation. Number one question, katulad nito. <clears throat> He stole an ill-gotten wealth in his sequence. In this sequence, pala, sorry. 5 million nung March, 10 million nung uh, July, 15 million nung October, and 20 million nung December. So, pag pinagsama-sama natin yan, makaka-accumulate makaka, tayo ng 50 million pesos. What is the crime committed by Senator Copetero? One count of corruption, one count of plunder, four counts of corruption, or four counts of plunder. <clears throat> Dati kasi, para makakomit ka ng plunder, kailangan 75 million ang uh, nakulimbat mo. Kung sa sik, oh, hindi, hindi importante kung sequence or isang kuhaan lang. So sa bagong batas, no, sa bagong amendment ng RA 7080, Act Defining the pen and Penalizing the Crime of Plunder, Sabi ng section 2 doon, sabi nun, uh, 50 million na. No? 50, 50 million na lang ang kailangan para makakumit ng plunder. Sabi doon, who by himself or in connivance with members of his family, relatives or affinity or in consanguinity, business associates, subordinates and other persons, amasses or accumulates, acquires uh, ill-gotten wealth, ano? Uh, true combination or as acts of described pero is aggressive uh, ag uh, an aggregate amount of total of value of at least five, uh, 50 million shall be guilty of crime plunder so 50 million na lang <clears throat> so binago na, that is 75 million so ang sagot dito is one count of plunder number 2 Gerald and Mateo while having a drinking spree had an argument or uh, argument on who among them is more handsome. Mateo, in order to terminate the quarrel, stood up and went home. Without Mateo's knowledge, Gerald followed him to his house. When Mateo was already inside the house or his house, Gerald took it as an opportunity to kill him by burning his house, which he did success successfully. So nagawa niyang sunugin yung Bahay, ano? What is the crime committed? So, ano ginawa niya? Gerald took it as opportunity to kill him by burning his house. So, gumamit siya ng apoy, sunog, para patayin yung ating uh, victim. So, ano magiging sagot mo dito? Murder only, arson with homicide, arson with, uh, arson and murder, or arson only. So, in this uh, scenario, ito ay murder lamang. Murder only. Kasi gumamit ka ng apoy, uh, gumamit ka ng uh, 
paggamit mo ng barn ang apoy or explosive para pumatay ay isang qualified aggravating circumstances yun uh, para pumatay so it's just murder only wala tayong arson with homicide ano? kasi kapag ka, nagsunog ka ng bahay hindi mo alam na may tao dun regardless kung ilan ang tao nandun hindi mo alam wala kang intention na pumatay gusto mo lang sunugin yung bahay <clears throat> hindi yon arson with homicide kasi automatic ma uh, absorb ng arson yung uh, yung homicide sa pagkapatay ng mga tao dun yan. Arson and murder naman kapag uh, pinatay mo yung tao sa ibang paraan with uh, qualified aggravating circumstances. And then sinunog mo yung tao para uh, mawalan ng evidence uh, evidence, no. So yun doon doon lang magiging arson and murder yun. So pag arson only, yun, arson only kapag uh, namatay yung tao dahil uh, nandoon siya sa loob pero hindi mo intention. So arson only yun. Wala tayo yung arson with homicide. Okay? <clears throat> Number three. Ruby went to break up with his girlfriend. Then he drives his cars and has a form of uh, relieving his anger. He continuously and loudly beeps the horn of his cars or car resulting to unpleasant sounds. A traffic enforcers arrested him. What law he violate or he violated? na uh, horn and paggamit ng sobrang lalakas na ilaw yun yung batang to all uh, motor vehicles okay okay number 4 Miss Judy a maid was cleaning the house when suddenly there was power interruption. Walang kurente. So he lighted the candle and placed the uh, placed the same to the table near the window curtain. Because of boredom, she left the house and while at the house, uh, while at the while while at at the outside, pala, sorry, the candle flame accidentally engulfed the curtain, which led to the house, uh, which led the house to burn momentarily. What is crime committed by Judy? <clears throat> no crime committed because the burning is purely negligence, reckless and prudence resulting to arson. No crime committed because Judy has no intention to burn the house or reckless and prudence resulting to damage to property. Lagi natin tatandaan na pag arson, yan ay uh, intentional ano, na panununog ng bahay. So kung ganun hindi intentional yung panununog, so hindi na yan, reckless and prudence resulting to arson. Kaya nga, hindi nga recklessness eh. So, kasi nga, ang arson na hindi recklessness, di ba? Uh, eh, mayroon kang ano dyan, intention talaga manunog. So, ang sagot dito is reckless imprudence resulting to damage to property. Okay? Number five. Robin killed George by shooting. In order to conceal the crime, Robin placed the corpse inside the building and set fire to the body. Uh, okay. The fire suddenly propagated and burned the building itself. What is the crime committed by Ruben? Yan yung tinatawag nating uh, arson and homicide. Okay? Number five, arson and homicide. <clears throat> and kasi, hindi pwede yung arson with homicide now. Tsaka, yung pagpatay niya naman ay wala, nang, wala naman nakalagay na Uh, qualified aggravating circumstances. So, arson and homicide. Number five. <clears throat> Number six. Natoy, na mahal na mahal ka, with intent to burn the house of Joy, tried to burn the building by gathering jute sacks laying inside the room. He lighted this, and as soon as the jute sacks began to burn, he ran away. The occupants noticed the fire and immediately put it out under the present oh, okay put it out under the present legal system what crime is committed by natoy na mahal na mahal ka <clears throat> so sinasabi sa present uh, legal uh, system natin wala tayong uh, frustrated arson ano so mamimili lang tayo kung attempted or consummated yan uh, the answer in this question is consummated arson kasi uh, nung paglagay niya ng uh, jute sacks sa 
loob ng bahay at nung, nung sinunog niya ito, no? simula nung nagkaapo yun at nag, nagsimulang masunog, already consummated na yon. Pero kung uh, nilagay pa lang niya yun sa loob, uh, plinase pa lang niya, hindi pa niya nasisindihan, it will be attempted arson. Pero itong question na ito, itong, itong question na ito, example ito ng prostrated arson sa ibang bansa, sa United States. So, in the, in the Philippines, wala tayong prostrated arson. So, huwag kayo malilito. Ano? Consumated arson yan. <clears throat> Number seven. Arturo wants to get an NVI clearance, but he has been previously convicted for murder, making it impossible to acquire a clearance. So, he approached an NBI staff and offered considerable amount. The NBI staff accept the money offered and issue him an NBI clearance. <clears throat> what crime committed? What is the crime committed? Siguro ni, ano, ano, ni Arturo. Ang crime na nakumit ni Arturo ay corruption of public official. So nakumit naman ang crime ni NBI staff ay bribery. Qualified bribery dahil murder yung uh, case, ano, murder yung kaso. So, grave offense yun. So, bribery, sa, bribery para kay uh, NBI staff and corruption of public official para kay uh, Arturo. So, the answer in this question is letter B. Corruption of public official. <clears throat> Number 8. During the commission of rape, while Molly Vogue was having a sexual intercourse with Vina, so, nagkaroon ng rape, ano? Si Molly Vogue nagkaroon ng sexual intercourse kay Vina. Si Maniakis was threatening her with a gun. So, para hindi makapalag, si Maniakis was threatening her with a gun. When Maniakis was lying with Vina, so si Maniakis naman ang, ang nakikipag-sexual intercourse, si Malivog naman was pointing Vina his revolver. So, palitan. What crime was, oh, what crime was or were committed? One count of rape for Malivog in illegal discharge of firearm for Maniakis. Each will be liable for one count of illegal discharge of firearm. C, one count of rape to Malibog and one count of rape to Maniakis. Or letter D, two counts of rape to Malibog and two counts of rape to Maniakis. The answer in this question is letter D. Two counts of rape for Malibog and two counts of rape to Maniakis. <clears throat> Kasi the act, di ba meron tayong sinasabi niya, the act of one is the act of all. For example, sa isang robbery, look out lang yung isa, pero kasama siya. Lima sila, look out lang isa. So, the answer is letter D. Okay, number. During the sexual intercourse, uh, she has no resistance and even enjoyed it. The letter is demented and letter D is just attempted break. Slavia of Anna was already penetrated before she woke up. So ang sinasabi, ka, uh, isa kasi sa element ng rape, kapag uh, yung tao <clears throat> uh, narape mo siya uh, one of the elements of rape is uh, when the offended party is deprived of reason or otherwise unconscious. So kung sakali ma si si tumanggap para ano ano ng bribery o ng bribe ang kaso doon ay bribery ang nag ang nagbigay yun ang nagcorrupt ng public official so corruption ng public official yun okay next number 10 Francis was suspect in murder of Maricel when he was confronted of the fact that he his fingerprints were lifted off from the crime scene as well as from the recovered firearm used in the murder, the former broke down to tears and told the whole story. In this case, such declaration can be considered as admission, confession, extrajudicial admission, or extrajudicial confession. So, nangyari ito during uh, interrogation, ano, siguro sa police station yan. Kasi kinumpronta siya eh, ng fox na yung fingerprint niya na kita sa crime scene kaya siya nakapa, kaya siya nag-iyak at sinabi niya yung uh, katotohanan ano yung buong story 
So bago natin sagutin, ano muna yung pagkakaiba ng admission and confession? <clears throat> Pag sinabi nating admission, ito yung means accepting the truth or fact in issue or matter of fact in civil or criminal cases. Pag sinabi naman nating confession, ina-acknowledge mo mismo yung guilt or acknowledges the guilt of the person that he is the one committed the, the offense. A legal statement. So confession yan, a legal statement by the accused in which he con uh, concedes the guilt of the offense. So pinagkaiba nila sa admission, isang part lamang yung inaamin mo doon. <clears throat> so pwedeng inaamin mo na kasama ka pero hindi ikaw ang pumatay, no? Admission. Pero confession, ikaw inaamin mo mismo na ikaw mismo yung nagkasala sa crime. In this case, sa ating tanong, nangyari ito sa labas ng court. So it is extrajudicial ano, extrajudicial confession kasi <clears throat> sinabi niya ang buong istorya. At umamin siya, okay? 11. Who among the following has committed an act which punishable under 9165 with range of penalty of 12 years and 1 day to 20 years and fine of 10, uh, 100,000 to 500,000? Okay. Sabi, si Erwin who has caught for illegal position of opiums, opium pipes and other parapernalia. So yung parapernalia, ano, yung pag um, ano, sabi niya? Okay. <clears throat> okay, ulit tayo. Si Erwin who was caught for illegal position of opium pipes and other parapernalia. So nakako uh, uh, ito ay section or article 2 section 12 ng ating 9165 which is uh, position of equipment and instrument or apparatus uh, um, and other parapernalia for dangerous drugs. Ang kaso dyan ay Ang penalty dyan ay 6 years and 1 day to 12 years with a penalty of or fine na 10,000 ano? 10,000 to 50,000. So hindi si A o hindi si Erwin yung ah, nakakomit niyan. Letter B. Joseph who was caught cultivating marijuana plants in plantation. So anong kaso kay Joseph na nagkocultivate ng cultivation of ma culture of plants Ang kaso ay penalty ang pinter si Gilbert to who issued an lawful medical prescription. Pag ang lawful medical prescription, anong section niya? Anong ano yan? Section? Article 2, section uh, no, Christian Okay uh, nakalimutan ko yung section, basta <clears throat> was issued an unlawful medical prescription pag unlawful uh, medical prescription din niya yan uh, 100 uh, 500,000 to 10 million pesos so, si Christian, who is section Okay, nalimutan ko rin ang section. Pero ang sagot niya ay si Christian, who is use of volatile substance, which is ang kaso, ang ano niya, isang kaso niya is 12 years and 1 day to 20 years. And uh, may mali yan. Okay, oh. 165. Who has committed? Who has committed? <clears throat> who has committed the penalty of life imprisonment to death and the fine of 500,000 to 10 million pesos? So si Erwin ba na naka, uh, nahuli for illegal possession of opium pipes and other parapirna niya? Hindi. Si Joseph who caught cultivating marijuana plants and plantation? Of course, pwede. 
Si Gilberto, who is issued the necessary medical prescription. And si Christian, who is an um, employee of then for illegal use of uh, volatile uh, substance. <clears throat> the answer in this question is letter B. Ano? Si Joseph na nahuli sa in a plantation. Next. <clears throat> Vivo and Apple versus Apple is uh, 12 years old. One evening, Vivo persuaded Apple to have sex with him where the latter acceded. What crime did Vivo commit? Statutory rape, act of lasciviousness, qualified seduction, or simple seduction? So, simple seduction. Bago natin alamin ang sagot. So, in simple seduction, yun ay seduction of woman, he is, who is single or widow, ano, of good reputation para mapakasalan niya yung offend, maka, 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 ano, makasex niya, maka, magkaroon sila ng sexual intercourse. So, that will be simple seduction. Magiging qualified seduction yun kung ang offended party is a virgin or over 12, under 18 age no? Tapos yung offender ay o yung nakipag-sexual intercourse na offender ay uh, person in authority o priest, house servant, domestic uh, domestic or guardian, teacher, brother, uh, ascendance of the latter or ng ating uh, ng ating uh, offended party. So that will be qualified seduction. Act of lasciviousness. Yan yung uh, any acts ano when a person commit lewdness to other person either sex so kahit lalaki ka at ikaw ay nang hipo with lewdness design ano ng kapwa mo lalaki may pagnanasa it will be act of lasciviousness ang sagot dito is statutory rape kasi si Apple ay 12 years old lamang hindi siya over 12 years old di ba <clears throat> pag sinabing simple seduction dapat over 12 years old under 18 14. In case of two vehicles approaching or entering the intersection at the same time, who should yield right of way? Okay, ito. Traffic ito. <clears throat> Mayroon daw intersection, so may crossing. May crossing na, na, ano, na daan. Mayroon dalawang vehicle na nag-approach sa intersection at the same time. So siguro, so imaginein mo yung north at saka, di ba, apat na yan, apat na kanto yan, ng crossing. North, South, tapos East and uh, West. <clears throat> dito sa North, mayroong a vehicle. And dito sa East, mayroong din vehicle. Sabay silang nag-approach sa ating crossing. Ngayon, sino daw ang titigil para padaanin yung isa? Sino yung mag-yield uh, the right of way? Ang sagot dito is yung the driver on the uh, the driver on the left. Ano? So, ibig sabihin itong si nasa east vehicle. Basta lalagyan yung tatandaan dito, ang batas dito, ang roll dito, kapag ka mayroon kang uh, kasabay sa intersection at ano ba, ikaw may sakay, kang, sakay ka sa kotse at nakita mo yung kasabay mo sa intersection ay nasa kanan mo, ano? Nakita mo yung vehicle ay sa kanan mo, ibig sabihin dapat siya ang mauna. Siya ang mayroong right of way. Pero kapag ka nasa intersection ka at <clears throat> nakita mo yung vehicle na kasabay mo ay nasa kaliwa mo, ibig sabihin ikaw ang mayroong right of way. Ikaw ang unang dadaan sa intersection. So yun lang yung lagi natin tatandaan dyan. So therefore, ang sagot dito ay letter D. The driver on the left side ang, mag, ang titigil para uh, padaanin yung nasa right niya. Yung nasa right uh, corner niya. Okay? 15. This referred as to the green triangle area. So dito yan sa Philippines. In yung ating Binget, Kalinga, Apayaw, and Mount Province. So, ang, ang ano dyan, ang production nila dyan ay marijuana. Yeah, green triangle. Rita was born on August 12, 1998. When can she be qualified to apply for non-professional driver's license according to the current provision of uh, RA4136? So, sa current ano, provision, 
pati na rin sa uh, student. 17 years old din. And sa pag-professional ka na, ang ina mo, ikaw ay 18 years old. So in this case, C, letter B. August 12, 2015. 17. Same direction at the same time na naman. So traffic na naman to. Who, who among them should yield the right of way? Mr. A, who is driving along Commonwealth Avenue, should, ya, should yield the right way. Parang kulang yung ating ano dito ah. Question. Mr. B, who is entering the highway, should be given the right of way. Okay. Kulang yung ating question siguro. Ang nangyari kasi dyan, ah, mayroong isang, may highway tapos mayroong ah, private road na magkaka, magkakadugsong, uh, I mean, yung highway road, ano ba, ito yung highway road, ito, daan pa ganyan. Mayroong isang private road na pasang, pasalanga, pero same direction papunta doon. Tapos mayroong dalawang vehicle na sabay na pumasok ano, hanggang sa magkatagpo sila doon sa sa parang intersection na yun. <clears throat> Ngayon, sino ang, sino ang unang dadaan? Sino ang titigil? Ang tanong dito, sino ang titigil para uh, mapadaanin yung mayroong right of way? Ang sagot doon ay titigil yung uh, nasa private road. No? Letter ano yun? Mr. A, who is uh, driving along the Commonwealth Avenue to the B, who is entering the highway. Should, yeah, okay, letter B. <clears throat> so, titigil yung uh, si Mr. B para kay Mr. A, para makadaan si Mr. A. Kasi siya yung nasa highway and si Mr. B yung nasa private road. So, yun. 18. Anna Marie is, uh, Anna Marie is traversing on solid yellow or white line with a dotted yellow or white line. Anna Marie can overtake only so, ang rule natin dyan, um, si, kapag ka ikaw ay nasa, isang, nasa highway ka at nakita mo yung line sa kaliwa mo ay solid, ano, walang hindi broken line. <clears throat> Ibig sabihin nun, hindi ka pwedeng uh, mag-overtake. So, kung halimbawa nakakita ka ng, sa kaliwa mo ay solid line tapos sa kabila ay broken line, ibig sabihin, yung dumadaan sa kabila, pwede silang mag-overtake sa kanilang uh, flow. Pero ikaw, hindi ka pwede mag-overtake sa iyong flow. Kapag naman nasa iyo na yung broken line, ano, tapos sa kabila yung solid line, ibig sabihin, may karapatan ka nang uh, mag-overtake. And, uh, yung sa kabilang flow naman, ang walang karapatan mag-overtake. So, answer in this question is, the oncoming traffic is... Okay. Number 18... Letter D. Tsaka lang siya pwedeng uh, mag-overtake kapag yung dotted, dotted line ay nasa kanyang linya na. Okay? <clears throat> number, 40, uh, number 19. Assume that police officers or oh, assume that police officer or the assault team confiscate property under the search warrant. Meanwhile, this uh, they issue a receipt of property seized to the lawful occupant of the premises but police officer or hid or hide some of the property they seized and didn't include all in the inventory what crime committed by the police officer or the by assault team so it will be robbery b Twenty. It refers to the stage of crime scene. Oh, 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 it refers to the stage of crime scene search at the most intrusive of all searches. The most intrusive of all searches, where the searches proceed to the concealed physical evidence and most difficult and hardly accessible areas like ceilings, drawers, lockers, and under uh, under carpets. So, yung mga yon. So kapag uh, ikaw ay uh, kapag ang sinesearch mo na yung mga ganun yung mga hard uh, or difficult uh, accessible areas like ceilings, drawers, lockers and under carpets ano sa ibabaw ng bubong yun ay yung tinatawag natin vigorous search matindihang uh, pag uh, sasaliksik na yan yung primary research uh, prim preliminary search ginagawa yan ng ating uh, uh, first responder ano para malaman kung ano yung kung gaano kalayo, kung, kung mayroon pa bang importanteng bagay na dapat munang unahin. So, preliminary search. 
yung detailed crimes in search, yun yung ginagawa ng ating mga uh, searchers. Searchers. Kapag ka nag, uh, nagsisimula na yung crime scene search, <clears throat> gumagamit na sila dyan ng mga technique like for example, will method, spiral method. Okay. 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 And then yung uh, final search, uh, uh, ginagawa yan ng ating mga searches uh, before nilang i-turn over yung crime scene sa local. So locality, ano? Wait lang guys. Ha? The suspect is under influence of alcohol by instructing him to stand for at least one minute. So, pinapatayo, ano? Tapos yung heels niya ay together. So, magkadikit yung ating uh, paa. With eyes closed. If the body will sway, then he is considered a drunk. So, sagot dito ay Rumberg's test. Ang ginagawa nga dun, uh, pinapapikit, uh, pinapatayo ng tuwid, tapos uh, magkadikit yung uh, paa, pinap tapos mga isang minuto kapag ka nagpagiwang-giwang yung tao ibig sabihin lasing siya determine the presence of uh, semen ano uh, determining the seminal stains or seminal fluids yun namang sodium rhodas rhodizonate test sodium rhodizonate test ito naman okay nawala yung connection natin rhodizonate test alimbawa may bullet hole uh, suspected bullet hole sa isang ding. Para malaman, no? Para uh, hole ngayon. So, doon natin malalaman yun sa sodium rhodizonate test. Okay? Yung Walker test naman, isa itong uri ng uh, presumptive test for gunshot residue. Useful in clothing. So, di ba mayroon tayong uh, paraffin test na tinatawag? Yung, yung tatakaan tayo ng uh, ng ano, ng tawag dito? Paraffin ng kandila ano sa sa ating uh, kamay parang imomold tapos yun yung bubusan ng ating uh, chemical para malaman kung mayroong uh, presence ng uh, nitrate ion itong Walker's test ganun din hinahanap din ito yung nitrate ion pero mas effective ito sa clothing so chemical lang to na ginagamit para malaman yung uh, presence ng uh, gun residue sa clothing okay 20 po. Uh, tumatama yung ilaw. Okay. 22. Aldrin lost his bracelet. One day, Aldrin saw Carlo using the bracelet. Aldrin recognizing the bracelet asked Carlo to give him uh, to give it to him because it was his property. Because Carlo refused, Aldrin withdrew his pistol, told him that if he would not give him the bracelet, he would kill him. Because of the fear for his life, no, Carlo gave the bracelet to Aldrin, which against his will. What crime has been committed by Aldrin if there's any? So ito ay grave coercion. Hindi ito uri ng robbery. <clears throat> Kasi sa kanya, yung, uh, sa kanya yung property. So ang ginawa niya, nagkaroon ng violence, uh, violence and intimidation. No? Pamimilit. So, grave question. 23. The ban on advertisement which prohibits advertising tobacco on television, cables, or cable television and radio began on, so numbers, ano? 23. <clears throat> July 1, 2008. So, letter C. Hindi ko din yan gano'ng kaalam. Okay. 24. While walking along Espana Avenue, you noticed a car that has letter S. You noticed a car that has letter S. <clears throat> S. 24, ano? Ba't na ulit yun? Okay, ulit, ulit. While walking along Espana Avenue, you noticed a car that has letter S. The first letter...
the first letter of its license plates Okay, ulit natin yung tanong. Hindi ko masyadong nag-gets. Uh, while walking along Espanya Avenue, you noticed a car that has letter S. Okay? Uh, at the first, uh, siguro at the first uh, letter of its license plates. This type of vehicle is considered as uh, diplomatic vehicle, military vehicle, government vehicle, or public utility vehicle. So, yun pala. May meaning pala yung uh, first letter sa ating uh, plate, ano, license plate. So, ang sagot dito ay government plates. Tapos yung, simula kasi sa letter A yan. Yung letter A, ibig sabihin region 1 yun. Letter B, region 2. Le, uh, letter C, region 3. Uh, ngayon, so on so forth. Pero yung sa NCR, may, madami silang letter, like for example, N. Letter N. NCR yun. Tsaka yung iba pang letters pagkatapos ng ibang region. Pero ang tanong dito is yung sa government. Sa government, letter S. Government vehicle. 29. Huang Bu, who is authorized by law to import or bring into the Philippines a dangerous drug, shall be liable of. So si Huang Bu ay authorized by the law to import or bring into the Philippines a dangerous drug, shall be liable of. So siya ay authorized. Ano? Paano siya magiging liable kung siya ay authorized? <clears throat> so, maybe no liability. Kasi meron kasing mga tao na may sakit. Like for example, yung uh, epilepsy, ano? Kinakailangan nila ng resin ng marijuana para maalis yung kanilang uh, pagkaka-epilepsy. So kung authorized naman siya ng batas o ng law ng Pilipinas na mag-bring ng uh, ng ano, ng tawag ito, ng <clears throat> dangerous drugs and then she has or he has no liability. Pasensya na kayo sa aking ilaw. Maliwanag kasi tayo dito sa labas. Pag sa loob kasi, walang signal. Okay? <clears throat> 26. If Dr. Jose issued unnecessary prescription of dangerous drugs, what is the fine to be imposed? Number 26, what is the fine to be imposed? Letter B. 100 to 500,000. Kapag ka unnecessary. Pero pagka unlawful, ano, unlawful prescription of dangerous drug, Ang fine nun ay 500 to 10 million pesos. Okay? Pagka unnecessary prescription lang, uh, 100 to 500 pesos. 27. Mr. A with intent to kill, shoot Mr. B. Unfortunately, Mr. X, the illegitimate son of Mr. B, uh, of Mr. A, was the one who was killed and not Mr. B. What is the crime committed by Mr. A? So, attempted homicide with parricide. Basta tanda natin sa parricide. Illegitimate or legitimate child. Ano, hindi man kasal ang mag-asawa or kasal man. Basta natural child nila yung namatay o pinatay. It will be parricide. <clears throat> 28. What is the crime committed of Julian breaks the window of the car of the okay what is the crime committed by Julian breaks the window of a car on the road and get the laptop <clears throat> so meron kaming medyo pagtatalo dito ano sa question na ito <clears throat> kasi ang sabi sa amin dati nung instructor namin kapag ka daw di ba may dalawang element ng ano may element ang robbery ng force of hunting at saka uh, Violence, and violence against and intimidation. Yung force upon things daw, ang nakapertains yun sa, <clears throat> sa ano, sa, sa, ano, ano to? Sa pag-entrance sa bahay or dun sa mismong things na kukunin mo like receptacles or uh, cabinets, yun ang pinarsa mo para makuha mo yung mga gamit dun. Yun daw yung robbery. Pero kapag ka, Ang force of paintings hindi naman hindi naman dahil doon. So kung halimbawa binasag mo yung <coughs> window ng uh, ating car. So it will be theft lang daw, sabi. Pero ang sabi ni attorney JMF natin, it will be robbery. So tanong na lang natin sa kanya no? kasi hindi ko rin masyadong 
Alam ito kasi siya. Mas, mas nakakalam si Tor ni JMF dito. Sa batas. <clears throat> okay. Next. 29. It is known as the scientific name of the tobacco plant in substance abuse. So, ang sagot dyan ay Nicotania tabacum. Yan yung scientific name ng tablak tabacco plant. Nicotania tabacum. Number 30. Fire officer Manalo was responding to fire scene. Apparently, the flame materials is asphalt or crudo. What is the best extinguishing agent of fire officer Manalo? <clears throat> so, anong ano niya? Anong flammable material ang ano? Asphalt or crudo? Ibig sabihin, ito ay liquids. Ano? Class B. So, letter A. Water is uh, water so that the flammable liquid may be diluted. So, hindi po ano? Kapag po natin, pag po yung flammable liquid, uh, ginamit natin pang extinguish dyan ay water, lalo lang yung dami, hindi mamamatay ang ating apoy dyan. Yun nga ang gasolina kapag binuhos mo sa dagat, ano? Tapos sinindihan mo, magdadalit pa rin. So, inapplicable yung water. Removal of the flame material from the fire. So, paano mo maririmove? Wait lang ha, hindi pa yan ang sagot. Okay. Foam extinguishing agent as it will block the oxygen in penetrating the flammable liquid or chemical powder as it will absorb the flammable liquid. So, yung chemical powder, ginagamit natin yan usually sa mga uh, flammable uh, metals. Ano? Ginagamit natin yan sa mga metals. Like for example, uh, magnesium. So, gamit natin yan ay powder. So, ang sagot dito ay foam extinguishing agent sa pamamagitan ng smoothering. Kasi yung uh, oxygen, mabablock, ano, hindi mapipenetrate ng flammable or flammable liquid. Okay? So, the answer letter C. Number 31. Ninya attends the birthday party of friend Kate. While the party is ongoing, a task force from PDEA organized by the Lisay surprisingly conducted a raid. And it was found out, it, and it was found out that Ninya was caught to have in her bag drug paraphernalia as aluminum foil lighter and uh, okay and, and, and lighter what is the proper penalty if any <clears throat> so ang penalty niya kanina na banggit natin is 6 months and 1 day to uh, 4 years no and 31 32. From the foregoing question, suppose that the PDEA found her a bag, oh, in her bag, 9 grams of cocaine. What is the proper uh, penalty? <clears throat> so, sabi sa Article uh, 11, or art Article 2, Section 11 ng 9165, RA 9165, yung 10 grams of opium, 10 grams of cocaine, 10 grams of raisin of marijuana, 10 grams of heroin, Ang kaso doon ay life imprisonment to death. Ano? Pero kapag um, not more than 9 grams, uh, not, not more than 10 grams, nabawa yung cocaine, not more than 10, uh, uh, 10 grams, ang kaso lang doon ay letter, letter A, 20 years and 1 day to life imprisonment. So kapag uh, max, kapag uh, more, uh, 10, more than 10 grams, life imprisonment to death. Kapag uh, hindi tatas ng 10 grams, 20 years and 1 day to life imprisonment. You can check that uh, on ano, Article 2, Section, Article 3 siguro, Section 11, ah, uh, Section, oh, uh, Section 11 90, ng 9165. <clears throat> okay. Kapag ka naman, okay, dito na, sa next. Dito naman, from foregoing situation, suppose that the PDEA found in her bag 5 grams of marijuana or resin what is the proper penalty? So, 5 grams daw ng marijuana resin. <clears throat> so, ang answer pa rin dito sa question na ito ay uh, letter A pa rin. 20 years and 1 day to life imprisonment. Kasi, 5 grams to um, ano, more than uh, 5 grams but not less than 10 grams uh, 20 years and 1 day to life imprisonment yan. Pero kapag bumaba ng 5 grams, halimbawa, uh, 
four grams of opium, four grams of cocaine, four grams of uh, resins ng marijuana, it will be 12 years and one day to 20 years. Pwede ng 24. From the foregoing situation, suppose that the PDEA found her in her bag 200 grams of marijuana. What is the proper penalty? 200, 200 grams of marijuana. <clears throat> so, ibig sabihin, less than uh, 200 grams. So, less than 300 grams yan of marijuana. Mm -hmm. It will be letter... Okay, letter C. 12 years and one day to 20 years. Ito. <clears throat> Lino is in doubt that his wife Jade is cheating on him. One night, he secretly followed Jade on a bar and surprisingly, he saw his best friend named Ace lowering the shirts of his wife while the woman is trying to resist. Okay? Trying to resist. Lino anticipated for the next thing to happen, but Jade and Ace later, later on entered in a room. At the moment they had sexual intercourse, Lino entered the room and inflicted slight physical injuries to Jade. And Ace, what would be the penalty for the crime committed by Lino, if any? Penalty sa, uh, sa crime na, na commit ni Lino, if any. <clears throat> no penalty kasi kapag ka less serious physical injury lang, hindi na siya paparusahan. Pero kapag ka, uh, sinabi natin, ah, hindi, I mean, kapag slight physical injury, sorry, uh, wala ng penalty. Pero pag less serious physical injury or serious physical injury, um, May kaso siya. So, yun yun. Less serious or uh, serious physical injury. Tapos, ang kanyang parusa ay diskero. Pero ang crime na nakumit niya ay serious physical injury or less serious physical injury. Pero kapag ka less serious or slight physical injury lang, sorry. Pag slight physical injury, wala pong uh, crime na nakumit. Ano? Si Lino. <clears throat> Walang penalty. From the foregoing situation, suppose that Lino killed Ace. What is the crime committed? So, ganun pa rin. Ano, nasa, uh, ang crime na na-commit niya ay homicide. Pero ang parusa ay bestiero. So, ang sagot dito ay letter C. Homicide. Ang crime na na-commit ni Lino. Pero ang penalty niya ay uh, bestiero. 37. He, he was a former convict who became now became a Paris investigator and found uh, and founder of the brigade uh, brigade de la sorete and the founder of our uh, the forerunner of our credit card system ulit he was former convict who became a Paris investigator and the founder of the brigade de la sorete and the forerunner of our credit card system ito ay si Si Eugene Vedok. Eugene Vedok. Si Kate Wayne, siya yung kauna-unahang <clears throat> kauna-unahang uh, woman detective in history. Hired in Perkenton Agency. Si Jonathan Wild, no, si Jonathan Wild naman, siya sang uh, eh. master of criminal who become most effective criminal investigator in London so ang ginagawa niya he he employed thief to catch thief ano nag, nag umuupa siya ng mga magnanakaw para mahuli din yung mga mismo magnanakaw so tinatawag siyang thief catcher si Jonathan Wild si Henry Fielding siya ang nag uh, <clears throat> create ng Bow Street Runners okay Dado and Didai are husband and wife. One time, Dido, their longtime friend and childhood sweetheart of Didai, visited them. 
Dido wanted to elope with Didai and continue their broken childhood promises. Dado came to know of the intention of Dido. So he immediately went to the house of the latter and confronted the same. They had a heated alter altercation with each other because of the rage. No, Dido got hold a knife. So siya pa nakakuha ng ano ng kutsilyo and stabbed Dado several times causing the latter's instant death. With fear of detection and apprehension, Dido set on fire the house to conceal his crime. The uh, the fire propagates extending to the uh, to uh, the other adjacent buildings. What crime was or what what crime was or were committed by Dido if there's any. So it will be uh, <clears throat> Letter, so letter A ba yan? Arson with homicide. So wala nga tayo nun. Arson and murder. Arson with murder. Or arson and homicide. So ang sagot dito ay arson and, arson and murder. Okay? Kasi sinaksak, siya, sinaksak niya ng several time ano. So mayroon ng qualifying aggravating circumstances. 39. Suppose Dido with his brother Ding Dong came together, agreed, and decided to commit arsons against Dado. What uh, will Ding Dong still be held liable for arson even if he did not participate? Dancer is yes. Pwede pa rin siyang kasuhan. Kasi kung mapapansin nyo, uh, conspiracy ano? May ilan lang na batas na pinapasuhan ng conspiracy. Kasama ang conspiracy to commit arson sa uh, pwedeng kasuhan ng uh, uh, na conspiracy conspiracy pa lang pwede nang kasuhan so dahil kasama siya sa pagplano so pwede pa rin siyang kasuhan 40 Sasuke and Sakura are lovers one night Sakura caught Sasuke in the arms of Bulma that evening while Sasuke was sleeping Sakura took scissor and cut, uh, and cut the genital of his lover. Sasuke was confined in the hospital for 90 days. What is the crime committed by Sakura? So, ang answer dito is mutilation. So, ano ba ang pinagkaiba ng physical injuries sa mutilation? So, kapag ka physical injuries, ano, at naputol mo yung limbs ng tao, hindi yun intentional. Kung baga, sa mutilation, intentional mong putulin yung uh, part ng tao. But in the uh, physical injuries, kung naputol mo man ang limbs ng tao, nabawa kamay, at dahil yun sa inyong pag, uh, sa inyong pagbunok, ano, sa inyong, during ano na yun, during, inyo, during sa laban nyo na yun. Pero sa mutilation, uh, intention mo talagang putulin yung kamay. So, yun yung pinagkaiba nila. Intentional yung mutilation. <clears throat> 41. Principles in homicide investigation that should be mind of, that should be in mind are mistake of the homicide investigator cannot be corrected and the homicide investigator should not cross the three bridges which he burns behind him. Which among the following is not one of these called barn bridges? So sinasabi nga, <clears throat> kapag daw ikaw ay criminal investigator, huwag ka munang kukross o huwag ka munang dadaan dyan sa mga bridge na yan hanggat di ka hindi mo pa nagagawa yung iyong uh, dapat gawin. For example, when the dead body has been involved, okay? So, na-burned mo na yung bridges na yun. When the dead body has been moved and when the dead body has been contaminated and chain of custody was not properly accounted. Okay? Yung tatlong yan yung burned bridges. Okay? Ganito yan. Kapag ka yung isang uh, criminal investigator, ano? Inimbalsa mo na kaagad yung ano? Pinaimbalsa mo na kaagad yung body nung nung bangkay. Hanggat hindi pa niya nakukuha o hindi pa niya nagagawa yung mga dapat niya gawin bago maimbalsa mo yung isang bangkay. Ibig sabihin, uh, burn bridges na yun. Uh, huwag ka muna dadaan doon hanggat hindi mo pa nagagawa yung uh, mga bagay na dapat mo gawin kasi masusunog yun. Hindi mo na yun mababalikan. Ano? Hindi, hindi ka na mga kabalik para gawin pa ulit yung mga gusto mong gawin dapat o yung mga dapat mong gawin bago, pumama, bago mo pa man ma-involve yung isang bangkay. 
or bago mo pa man ito uh, yan, for example letter, uh, letter B the dead body has been moved so maaaring may mga bagay na dapat ka munang ginawa bago mo galawin yung bangkay so bago mo galawin yan kailangan or bago ka dumaan dyan kailangan gawin mo muna yun no? bago mo galawin o bago mo sabi natin change position yung bangkay okay So, answer in this question is letter D. When the dead body has been... Ah, okay. Uh, letter C, ang sagot dito. When the dead body has been contaminated and then chain of custody was not properly account accounted. Sorry ha. Ang, ang three bridges dito ay ito. Letter A, letter B, and letter D. When the dead body has been cremated or burned. So, yung tatlong bridges na yun. Huwag mong, huwag mong dadaanan hanggat di mo pa nagagawa yung iyong mga dapat gawin dahil Uh, hindi mo na sila mababalik. <clears throat> 42. Seth is 24 years old and had a love affair with Andrea, a 10-year-old girl. When they were in the house of Seth, he took the opportunity to have sexual intercourse with Andrea to show their uh, intimidate love with each other. Andrea consented and enjoyed very much with the sexual intercourse. Can Seth be liable for rape? Yes, because there is intimidation in uh, being showed by Seth. No, because Andrea consented and enjoyed very much with the sexual intercourse. C, yes, because the consent of Andrea is invalid because of her age. And D, no, Seth, is, uh, Seth can be liable only for reduction. So the answer is yes, because the consent of Andrea is invalid because of her age. Magiging statutory rape yun. 43. While walking down the main street, Teddy found a wallet with 200 pesos, driver's license, and credit cards. Teddy decided to keep the money in the wallet and destroy the license and credit cards. Under the circumstances, Teddy is guilty of misappropriation of property, embezzlement, lancery, or no crime. So the answer in this question is lancery. Other term for uh, theft, Larsen, uh, larceny, larceny, sorry, larceny. Other term for theft, embezzlement, other term for malversation. No? 44. This literally means sword smith, a militant Islamist group based, uh, based in and around Hulu and Basilan, Philippines. <clears throat> Sino yung mga yan? Sila ang tinatawag na Abu Sayyaf group. Itong Abu Sayyaf group, uh, humiwalay sila sa MNLF nung nagkaroon ng pistok. Ano? Abu Sayyaf group. Okay. Selling, distributing, supplying, or transporting legitimately imported okay legitimately imported uh, in transit manufactured or procured controlled precursor and essential chemicals by the manufacturer of medicine the drug trafficker is called chemical smuggling sale chemical diversion or drug trafficking okay the answer in this question is chemical diversion saglit lang guys may kunin lang ako na daglag next question <clears throat> It is the most important alkaloids and constitute about 10% of the, uh, the use raw opium. So yung opium mayroon siyang, uh, ang sagot dito ay heroin, 10%. Yung, ay heroin sorry, morphine. Itong opium mayroong morphine, terpen, ter, 10%. Yung morphine na yun, ang ginagawang heroin at kudin. So yung kudin ang pinakamahinang uh, klase ng uh, alkaloids, uh, 
uh, narcotics na galing sa opium. So yung opium may morphine which is 10%. Yung morphine na yun ang ginagawang heroin. And pinaka pinakamahinang klase ng uh, uh, narcotics na galing sa opium ay codeine. So ginagamit yung codeine sa pagtreat ng uh, ubo yata, ubo. Hmm, ubo. 47. Where did the concept of organized crime emerge? In Sili, uh, Silis, uh, C, Sicily, Italy, when the mafia was first emerged. In Japan, when Yakuza was found. In the US, when Al Capone ran Chicago with blood guns, uh, blunt and guns. And in letter D, in China, when triad was established. The answer in this question is letter C. In the US, when Al Capone ran Chicago with blood and guns. 48. In 2000, the United Nations Convention Against Transnational Organized Crime extended the legal definition of money laundering to include all serious crimes. This is known as Palermo Convention. Yeah, letter C, Palermo Convention. 49. This is the form of interrogation techniques intended to confuse the, interrog uh, the interrogee and put him into defensive position. The interrogo becomes frustrated and confiscated uh, and confused pala, sorry. Then he will be likely rebuild the more than he intended. So, ang nangyayari daw, you know, it's a form of interrogation technique intended to confuse the interrogi o yung ini-interrogi and to put him into defensive position. The interrogi becomes frustrated and confused then he will likely to rebuild more than he is intended. So, ang tawag sa ganong uh, technique is uh, question barrage technique. Kumbaga, uh, tinatanong mo siya ng tinatanong, uh, kumbaga, pinup, uh, tawag ito, uh, binubumba mo siya ng tanong, ano? Tanong ka ng tanong, ikaw ba yung ganyan? Ikaw ba yung pumatay? Ikaw ba yung nandito? So, madami kang tanong na sinasabi. Hanggat di, uh, hindi mo na siya binibigyan ng pagkakataon na uh, makapagsalita. So, ang tendency nun, makukonfuse siya and he will tell uh, or he will uh, likely to reveal more than he is intended. <clears throat> so, yun yung tawag sa technique na yun. Question barrage technique. 50. A fire incident occurred at the certain distance in business establishment located in Quezon City. A fire station immediately responded to the scene by deploying one of their fire trucks. What is the expected time of arrival if the distance of the incidence is 25 kilometers? Okay, 25 kilometers from the fire station and the fire truck is traveling at the speed of 100 kilometer per hour. So, para makuha natin yung time of arrival, ano, gagamit tayo ng uh, formula. Yung formula na tinatawag na SDT. So, gagawa ka ng imaginary line na T. Dito yung S, dito yung D, at dito yung T. So, kung gusto mo makuha yung uh, time, gusto mo makuha yung T, i-divide mo yung uh, distance sa speed. So, ang mangyayari dyan, i-divide natin yung, ano, yung speed sa 25 kilometers, which is 4 hours. 4 hours ang makukuha natin. Pero wala sa tanong, ah, wala sa sagot, yung 4 hours. <clears throat> Ibig sabihin, minutes ito. Minutes pala ang hinahanap dito. So, ang gagawin mo, para makuha mo yung minutes, di ba sa isang oras mayroong 60 minutes, i-divide mo yung 4 hours sa 60, and then lalabas yung result na 15. So, ang sagot dito ay 15 minutes. Oh, okay, tapos na tayo sa ah, CDI. Malapit na, dalawang, dalawang area na lang. Bakit sociology of crimes na ito? Lang guys, napin natin yung correction administration. Okay, sabi ni sir, attorney, break time daw muna. De, magkukontinue tayo after 1 hour siguro, 1 p.m., no?
Ah, pinagsisimula na ating uh, live. So, sociology of crimes and ethics. So, ayan guys. Hanggang doon na muna tayo. Mabalik tayo ng 1pm para sa sociology of crimes and ethics and correctional administration. So, tapusin ko na muna dito. Ano. Salamat sa pakikinig. Salamat sa panonood. Thank you. So, bye-bye.